Ooh, welcome to the randomizer stream today. Randomizer number 124. I think that number sounds right. I'm <laughs> glad there's everybody here. Um, it's been a busy week for me with a lot of technical issues, but today I think everything's going to work great. And hopefully saying that is not going to be an issue and won't change anything at all. Thank you so much for... Uh, there's a couple of things going on. So Kyla is coming in here with the bits and the prime sub. I have uh, to mention Kyla in a moment in a little bit. So I'll come back to come back to him. But uh, thank you so much, Drewfus, for the resub. Real cream trees, <laughs> real cream cheese hours. Who up? I'm up. I got a game to play. So uh, here we go. We got another randomizer game to play. Um, we are not adding in Midnight Suns just yet. That's going to be in a couple weeks. So if you did want to pick that up, you have and want to play, play the randomizer, they get a couple weeks to do that. So um, there's plenty of stuff that's going to kick my butt. That's left. Um, we got a lot of eleven masterminds left. Um, if we get through all master, all the masterminds, by the way, all 11 masterminds, the entire mastermind roster resets. And we try to go through all of them again. And uh, we try to get through all the schemes. That'll be fun. So before I get started with that, there is a quick announcement about the Randomizer League. And if you're in the Discord, you know this already. So this entire time I've been running the Randomizer League, I've been doing the stream on Thursdays. And then after I finish the stream on Thursdays, I spend another hour or so uh, rushing over to get Setup B built, to put in the to get the results up from last week, to get the, uh, the info page up for this week, and so on and so forth. So uh, that is going to be moving over to the wonderful Ollie and Kyla. Yeah, we'll see if we'll see if uh, Spidey cards get it. I just like the mat combo. So Ollie and Kyla, if you play the Randomizer League, you know who they are. They've been playing the league forever, and they do pretty well in most of the weeks. Um, they have a lot of fun playing the league. Uh, it's something that's very important to them, and uh, they have agreed to take over the responsibilities of the behind the scenes for the league. So a big thank you to them for taking that off my plate to give me more time to do other things for you. So uh, starting today, after the stream, they are going to start processing uh, the incoming results for this week. They're going to get everything onto the spreadsheets. Ollie's doing some behind the scenes work improving the spreadsheet. They're doing some really cool stuff. So a uh, couple, a couple of things. It's very nice of them. It's very cool to see. Um, it'll be nice to log off the stream, and all I got to do is get the video ready to upload. So uh, it'll, it'll go great. I, I know it will. Uh, a couple things. Please be patient with them today, because this is the first day that they're working together on getting all the results up. Thank you. Oh, Real Firestar, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Happy noises. I love the happy noises and the waving bagels. And we got a hype train coming along. So yeah, be patient with them on this first day. It might be a little bit, take a little bit longer to get this set up up. This is the first time they're doing it and getting set up B up there for you. Um, so that's going to happen. And then another, another small change. So usually the setups are due at 1 o'clock p.m. on Thursday's Pacific time. We're going to move that up just a little bit to make sure everybody gets their, uh, you know, gets their ducks in a row and gets all the, all the scores in before uh, and, and get them uploaded. Just to make sure that it's all ready for the stream. So the new due date is going to be up a little bit. It's going to be uh, 10 p.m. Pacific instead of 1 p.m. Pacific the following day. So 10 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday uh, is when the new due date for the league is going to be, which is still plenty of time. You probably have the the, the uh, setups in earlier on Thursday. you got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get those results in. So almost an entire week. Uh, seven, six days and change. So look forward to that. But yeah, be patient with them today. That is going to... Uh, so those will be up very, very soon when those are up. Yes, it's good that you aren't putting in Suns yet because my order got delayed. Oh, that's too bad. I know some people are still waiting for it. I did add Midnight Suns into Legendary Legacy Adventure. There's some paths being created there, and it is an arcade. If you want to use it in an arcade right now, you can do that. All right. A couple quick things. I haven't... Uh, let me see. I want to just put a sidekick here. I want to see what my focus looks like while I'm talking to you guys. All right, so we got a new setup today while I focus the camera. Um, this past setup we got to go over, though. What do you think happened? Hey, Jolt, thank you so much for the gifted sub, and you've made a level one hype train. Thank you so much, Jolt, for that sub. I, I didn't catch where that went to, but enjoy that. Oh, yeah, Big Big got it, so enjoy that. Um, all right, so how do you think this last week went? This last week was uh, Exodus Plunders Wakanda's Vibranium. We had, and during the tournament, by the way, we the attendance is down a little bit for the league, which is to be understood because people only have a no certain number of time to play games over the week. But uh, so plenty of people played this. What do you think the like, uh, the win rate and the fun level were on this setup this past week? As I slightly, I think this focus is pretty good, but I'm just going to reach up here. It's going to be a shaky cam for a second. Apologies. It's hard to get everything where I want it. To see Layla in the corner. She's running out of focus as the sidekicks are out of focus. And I just got to find a happy medium. Oh, man, this is tough. I'm going to go with that. I think I need a better lens. I think I finally need a lens upgrade. All right, 90% win, 4.4 fun, says Jolt. 
I'm going to tell you that your win rate is too high for this one. It was Exodus after all. But not ridiculously high, I think. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. This was Exodus, Plunders, Wakanda's Vibranium. Oh, let me show the setup, by the way. I can just do that for you so everybody can see. All right, there was the setup. So we had Acolytes, Intelligentsia, and uh, we had Mantis and Shioka, really cool in setup A. And I tried to rec uh, recreate that as best I could in setup B. Again, speaking of setup B, um, Ali and Kyla are going to be building setup B as well. They're going to be doing everything I normally do except for basically streaming the setup and randomizing it. So look forward to that. Um, they're going to really put some thought into it. I think Kyla's even started to try to uh, use an algorithm to determine it. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. Um, so 67%, 69, 57. That's a bit closer. And then fun level hovering around 4.0, 4.4. <laughs> at least not yet, right? All right, let's go ahead and look at that uh, like value and uh, fun, le fun level and win rate. All right, so win rate was 59%. And the, fun the win rate was 59%. Fun level was 39 so just under what you guys said, but still makes it a great setup. So most of you had fun with this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scores. Let's start with setup B. Setup B, uh, Montax there in 11th place. 10th place goes to Kennis and Mama Bird with 14.5 total rank points. 9th place goes to Snatch Cat with 17 total rank points. Needed to hit Exodus one more time, but ran out of turns to get it done. Yeah, with the final blow, that is tough. I've been there many times. All right. And... Uh, here we go. Well, off the cuff, did you sub as well? I totally missed that. Hold on, I want to look at my, uh, I want to look at my, uh, my feed. Oh, just did it two minutes ago. Thank you so much for the off, uh, for the uh, community sub off the cuff. I missed that completely. So thank you for the chat message, Queenie girl. All right, uh, here we go back to what I was doing. Regularly scheduled programming. So flip flop maniac there at eighth place with 18.5 total rank points. Moving up to Captain Cardone and Paisley at 7th place. 19.5 total rank points there. Um, no wins, by the way, so far for setup B. This is skewed a little bit towards setup A against setup B. Um, thank you so much for some more bits, Kyla. Throwing them at the throw them at the stream. Brett Campbell there at 6th place. 20.5 total rank points. No comments. A lot of, a lot of no comments. I don't blame you because this can be a feel bad. 5th um, place goes to, speaking of which, off the cuff at 24 total rank points as our first winner of setup B. I think this was my first time really making strong guy work. When he works, he's a lot of fun. Um, he's not just get super strong, beat him up, but he also has his investigate, which is which is very <laughs> has a lot of utility. Fourth place goes to Ollie and Kyla there. 31 total rank points. Looks like the escape did them in a little bit, but because I got first in turns, sucks when we both start with four and two and only villains coming out. Strong guy and Hulk came from behind and worked rather well. Ollie got to play Wolverine and Shatterstar, which started strong but struggled to recruit a bit late game. Yeah, it'll do that. Uh, third place, top three goes to Red John here. 34.5 total rank points. Uh, fourth and third and first got him the third place ranking there. Uh, anyone else have a rare is a vibranium attunement every time. Also, I got Shatter Stars rares. Then was only able to get seven attack when Exodus would be shattered down to eight. Second place goes to Jolt with 36.5 total rank points, who had an HQ full of nothing but attack to start and carry most of the game, but it looked like it worked out for him. And then first place for setup B this week goes to Avatarish, who has had a few first places recently. 39 total rank points, first place across the board there. Got three Vibranium plundered by turn nine. The very first stole Wolvie's rare, but managed to regain control. Leader is evil. Yes, he is, but it didn't seem like to slow you down that much. So five winners for setup B. Uh, well done, everyone there. And let's move over to setup A, the one that I played. And uh, there's Montex there at 11th place again. And then 10th place goes to Joe Stone with 12 total rank points. Sorry, Montax had a rough week this week. Uh, ninth place goes to Off the Cuff at 12.5 total rank points. Rough shuffles all around. Vibranium kept going to high-powered villains, and the Vibranium Attunement never swung my way. Eighth place goes to Snatch Cat with uh, 17 total points. The Randomizer picked some good heroes for this setup. Yep, agree. Although lacking in mutant heroes, the recruit generation of Mantis, She-Hulk, and Shuri made hitting Exodus manageable. Seventh place goes to Brett Campbell with 23.5 total rank points. Yeah, definitely more winners with setup A than setup B. Sixth place goes to Captain Cardone and Paisley, 26.5 total rank points. Fifth place goes to, hey, it's me, with 27.5 total rank points. We had four people who did better than me. Who was that? It was Snash108, 31 total rank points there. Third place goes to Jolt, who's in the top three for both setups, 33.5 total rank points. Solid game, kept coming up short either one more recruit or attack multiple times, and it took quite a few turns to finally get the hands needed. Second place goes to Red John, also in the top three this week in both setups with uh, 35.5 total rank points and first place. And there they are, Ollie and Kyla in setup A, 37 total rank points. 
who uh, had a second in points per turn, but that didn't matter for them first everywhere else. She-Hulk and Mantis worked pretty well. Really liked the scheme, not overbearing, but still had to be managed. And uh, this is a fun one. Again, if you didn't get to play this one, I highly recommend checking this out. It will be on the uh, League sheet later because people seem to enjoy it. It was challenging enough. So there you go for that week. We have a brand new week right now. So let's go ahead and get the things up and let me know what you want to see, who you want to see, um, what's going to happen. Oh, the randomizer is not the right size. Hold on. Let me adjust it. It's too big. So who you want to see? Who are you going to see today? Um, no Midnight Suns yet, but there are still 11 Masterminds and plenty of other things. We have not seen Gambit yet. Gambit is the only core set hero we have not seen. Oh, I know why it's looking that way. Oh, I went to the other window. Yeah, let me know who you want to see as I fetch this window. Sometimes things randomly jump to other monitors, and I don't know why. And I don't want to click end of stream by accident. Check chat in a second. All right, there we go. I got the right thing. Whew, bring me Gambit. <laughs> That's a change. All right, let's go ahead and show this thing. Um, I'm going to try to go for a fast game today. That's not my record. That's not my record at all. Let me get to my record. There it is. Okay. Check it out, chat. So we got Spider-Man, Thanos, Gambit, King Black Panther, Feeling Hercules this week. More Gambit, Darkhawk. Gambit's debut has to come with the Blackjack scheme. That would be great. The Blackjack scheme is actually pretty hard to, to win. Uh, Magneto, more Deadpool schemes. I think there's what? There's one more left? Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if... And I got to get that uploaded. Uh, thanks to the technical difficulties, it's not up yet. But uh, we'll see if the collecting of the cards is faster than my first attempt last week. And then Mystique would be cool. I do like using Mystique's hero set. Ally set, that is. Oh, I should open my boxes. I am running behind today. That's okay. I'm here for you. Boxes are open. Killmonger, I think, is still there. Um, okay, it's all on the sheet. Let's do this thing. Oh, let me do predictions first. One moment. There's me with the mouse in the corner. Uh, I, I don't think Scotty has she ever shown up in a randomizer game. If she has, it must have not been that that often. So let me pop up a new prediction for 10 minutes. Get those channel points. If you'd like to do a blind prediction, now is your chance. Before I randomize, I am about to do it because I have been taking too long already. Here we go. Hands on the randomizer. Just finished playing Legendary. Now it's time to watch Legendary. Such is the life of anybody in this community. <laughs> That makes, that's, you, Marcus, you literally described me when I would watch Ali and Kyla's stream. I would finish my stream and I'd go watch them while I made dinner or whatever. I was like, ooh, more legendary. Uh, here we go. Let's uh, randomize this thing in three, two, one. Bam. Ooh, it's okay. Okay. We got some, we got some Infinity Saga. We got Epic Grim Reaper. I think I've lost a Grim Reaper twice, so he shouldn't be Epic. I have to check on that. I'm not 100%. But we got we got light, we got symbiote bonds we got shards we got we got officers in the city we got a little bit of piercing energy that you can't use on the officers it's epic grim reaper for sure so get those predictions in here we got we got some hydra we didn't get scotty we got bob we got bruce banner from infinity saga this should be interesting okay yep he's still epic all right epic grim reaper it is we got some graveyards we got black widows and graveyards coming up okay let me get everything I said I was going to have a good time <laughs> time here today, but I'm taking forever. All right. The good news is... PE with locations. Yeah. That's rough. Um, nerfing Polaris a little bit. But it'll help with the um, symbiote bonds, though. Um, this is the last time we'll face Epic Grim Reaper, even if I lose. Okay. Looking those predictions come in. I got the awesome promo scheme there. And uh, let's get everything up. Lethal Legion. Okay. I'm sure Kyla's starting to take notes on this setup already for setup B ideas. Um, all right, and the Life Foundation. We'll see. And then uh, more, we got shards involved. I don't know if there's anything I should look out for. Yeah. 
Oh, I think we already took out the hood, but yeah, that would have been rough. Double dark memories. And then, all right, we got two Avengers. We got uh, Bruce and Daredevil. Haven't used a uh, this Bruce Banner yet. That wouldn't be a bad idea, Avatar. Yeah, you, you can throw out your setup B suggestions if you want. This is their first one, so suggestions are welcome. Check that out. And then, uh, Daredevil. Iron Fist Daredevil. There we go. And then we got uh, one hero of Asgard, Lady Sif. Get some artifacts. There's a lot of keywords in this one. Artifacts there, too. Maybe, maybe not, Snash. The mechanics are pretty different than Core Hulk. Some are different, some are not. I love a nine expansion setup, hey, don't you? You know? All right, means summer is coming. Polaris! There's some piercing. She's going to be hard to sub in. And then we got uh, Bob. Of course! Get my Hydra card. Got him. Okay. Infinity Banner is a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to... I hope he shows up today. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and place everything. Get this all together. Make sure the epic side of Grim Reaper is out. Yeah, the expansion, the uh, setup A is only going to get wilder in the number of expansions. Um, what are the max expansions you could have? Um, if the With the always leads, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's nine. This is the max, max expansions if the scheme doesn't call for extra. So if the scheme does call for extra, that is a chance for more expansions. So it could be more, but this is one of the highest number you can get. It is the highest number you can get without an always, uh, without an extra hero, extra villain, extra henchman. Okay, we got Epic Grim Reaper there, shuffling up the tactics. And our villain deck is going to include nine shield officers of the villain deck. I think that's incorrect again. Yeah, this is uh, eight shield officers. So the um, this has to be changed. The Wheel of Fate is incorrect here. It should be eight shield officers, just like it was for the tournament when it said the same thing. So there's a special rule for you, Kyla. If you don't want to edit the image, you can just say, Wheel of Fate is wrong. I should probably let uh, the developer know. Midnight Suns has been added to Wheel of Fate, by the way. So um, you can uh, randomize games of that right now if you update it. We shuffle up my officers. You do get special officers in setup A. So we could get Black Widow Initiates that are special. And because you can choose to gain them or send them undercover, it's a good chance to uh, fish out some of the special ones. So I'm going to shuffle them in face down so I don't know if I got any special ones there. Uh, yeah, the Wong was patched in. Um, no, you cannot swap heroes in the randomized. The randomized league is you play it as is. The tournament is where you get to swap heroes out. So everybody's literally playing the same setup. So I'm going to put the uh, villain deck face down because... Uh, actually, let me add the schemes and twists first because those can go in face up. The strikes and twists. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's accurate. And now let me put it face down. Add in eight mystery officers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No idea who those are. And then two mystery bystanders as well. Here we go. One, two. Let's get that shuffled up. So we got um, six twists. That's eight minus one per player. So that's six piles for me. And we'll see if it's one of my classic shuffles or I get something a little more lucky. I'm hoping for something a little more lucky. Just watched the Taskmaster's tournament game. I see a lot of bridge builders lately. I don't mind the bridge builders in the games because they're a lot of fun. I like, you know, I, I like things that care about certain city spaces and they do that. So it's a blast. Not a big villain deck. It's standard. Well, it's actually more than standard. It just feels like less. Because it was six piles. It's an illusion. Okay. So if I recall correctly, Lethal Legion's got some locations in it. Grim Reaper's going to make some locations. Then Life Foundation cannot symbiote bond with location. So Life Foundation may whiff, but they can bond with other Life Foundation and uh, Sidera Marie. So the bridge builders can symbiote bond to things. 
We'll see what happens there. All right, we've got uh, Hero Deck. Checking out the predictions. Submissions are still open. Looks like it's eight to 12 saying win to lose. I would not know where to predict on this one personally. And officers, they can bond with officers, yes. Because um, they are villains in the in the uh, villain deck. But And the thing is, a symbiote bonded officer cannot be pierced with piercing energy. I think. One of them has a VP value, one of them doesn't. Okay, can a bonded officer be attacked with, be defeated with piercing energy? Do they both need to have the symbol or does just one of them? I think the rule says to add the VP values together, they become one villain. So it would, they would be one villain with printed VP, right? So it should work. We'll have to look that up if it comes up, if there's a disagreement. You add no VP to the other printed VP and then it should work and you can pierce them. I don't think both of them have to have a printed value because they're one villain, right? I, I think they're clear for PE to hit them if they're bonded. The officers by themselves are not. So that would be an interesting strategy. If I get piercing energy, I wait till they I try to get them bonded and then I hit them with PE. No, Life Foundation can bond with other Life Foundation. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, the henchmen are the easiest things to proxy to. Oh yeah, totally. They're just villains, right? That'll work. Bonded Widows of Dark Memory sounds terrifying. It's not great. Okay. Yeah, go get the, the Infinity Saga if you can. It's a lot of fun. Alright, uh, starting hands. I know those guys. Avatar is pasting from the rule sheet. A combined villain has the VP of both its cards combined, so you can spend piercing energy... Uh, from Legendary X-Men to equal both cards. Total combined VP to fight the combined villain putting one of its cards into your victory battle. So that's that's a yes, then. Um, they would have nothing plus whatever the villain, whatever the uh, life foundation would be. The question I had was, for some reason, would one of the villains not having a printed VP value disqualify it? I don't think that's the case. X-Men is the only set with piercing energy, and it's probably for the best. I think as a balanced mechanic, Shatter is much better. So I would prefer to see Shatter go forward. And I think most people agree with me on that one. And uh, anything else I got to do? No. We're good. All right. Only uh, under 10 minutes. I can't stop running my mouth, so that's about the best time I get nowadays. And let's look at the uh, predictions here. So, oh, we got closer. So 11 folks say yes, I can win this with 8.8 thousand points in the line. And then, yeah, I know Kyla loves piercing energy. <laughs> I think those are true. You do love piercing energy, and you are in the minority on that one, I believe. Which is fine. Uh, 12 people say lose, and it's close on the points, too. So 8.8, 10.6. We will see. Yeah, it's fun, and then you realize how overpowered it can be in a lot of setups. Which some people like, some people don't like. Uh, okay, let's upload this and go over our mastermind and scheme today. I have no idea, really, how this is going to go. So I'm excited about this. Oh, we got to adjust the uh, strikes and twists before we do that. Um, actually, twists is... Well, we'll do it after I go, go over things. Here we go. So, uh, Epic Reaper is our mastermind. Epic Grim Reaper. And if I keep this here, it's going to wobble. And it's going to bother the heck out of me. So, hopefully, it won't happen. All right. Epic Grim Reaper's got nine attack. He gets plus two attack for each location card in the city. Master Strike. This strike enters the city as an eight attack graveyard location that says this gets plus three attack. Well, there's a villain here. It's worth six VP. Then, if there are at least three location cards in the city, each player gains a wound that can sneak up on you. And then we've got the scheme, train Black Widows in the red room. We got uh, eight twists minus one per player. That's six here. And then eight shield officers in the villain deck. Special rules, officers in the villain deck and city are Black Widow initiate villains with three plus attack and dark memories. Fight, gain this as an officer without dark memories or send it undercover. Twist, a Black Widow initiate enters the city from the officer stack. Play another card from the villain deck. Evil wins when there are three villains per player in the escape pile or the villain deck runs out. So let's update the scheme twist from eight to six and let's add villains escaped. It's gonna be out of six as well. And then we'll start. Pop over here. And this would be uh, kind of important to put in the special rules because every everybody always asks about it. Um, yes, officers in the escape pile for this setup count as villains in the escape pile because they are villains the whole game until they're gained. Let's keep that in mind. Let's switch that over to four. 
It's pretty easy to figure out, though, if you don't know. Um, figure out when the card becomes a villain and figure out when it's no longer a villain. So for this one, um, it says officers in the villain deck are Black Widow Initiate villains. So as long as they're in the villain deck and they're not gained yet, they go through the city, go to the escape pile, they are still villains the whole time. It gets tricky when you have the Hydra villain group in there and you put officers directly into the escape pile. And in that case, we make two different piles. But we're not worrying about that today. I don't know why I'm excessively complicating things. Okay, so we're all set there. Um, I think dodge was handled better in, well, I, I mean, I like what it does in villains, but in the Black Widow, it's more balanced. So I wouldn't necessarily call it broken there. It's harder within that set just to get, uh, get what you need to get. Okay, I think I'm ready. This should be uploaded. Let's hide it. Um, let me turn the camera just a little. And let's get started. Here we go. Turn number one begins right now. Oh, HQ. I thought, let's hope it'll only have to do one playthrough today. We'll do a quick HQ. So we got Sif, Iron Fist, Daredevil, Polaris, Bruce Banner, and Bob. Hey, look, it's everybody. Here we go. We got a five and one, and then we'll look through this HQ in a little bit. So turn one is going to be our classic beginning turn one twister strike. No, it's going to be a bridge builders. What a surprise. So the bridge builders have ambush after this enters the city, which is all ambushes. If there's a villain on the bridge, that villain and this henchman each gain a shard. Otherwise, move this to the bridge, fight KO one of your heroes. So nobody's there. They're going right to the bridge. Okay. And we won't worry about them right now. I got five recruit and I can take Lady Sif as the most expensive card. But I'm going to have to commit to artifacts. Let's look at everything I can take here. And I'm also going to... Uh, cause I, I see that happening a lot. It's going to bug me. So just give me a moment to move this over and move the camera over. So I can not have the wobble there. Adjusting cameras can be a chore. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Here we go. Weapons Master. 2 plus attack. If you control any artifacts, you get plus 2 attack. Cost 5, of course. And this is great, but I have to see the artifacts. If I take this and I don't see a lot of artifacts, it's not going to be that worth the recruit. We've also got some piercing energy starting here. Here's Polaris. Two piercing energy, and then range draw a card. This is a pretty good one. Polaris is very good. One of the best. Uh, one of the best. I think her and Psylocke are probably the best piercing energy heroes. Just raw piercing energy power. Uh, but you can't. You can only use piercing energy on villains and masterminds. So enemies that have printed victory point value. So you can't use them on locations. You can't use them on cards that don't have printed VP. And you have to fight them for that printed VP value. So I could use this to hit the mastermind if I have enough and some of the villains. Then we got uh, Brains and Brawn, Bruce Banner. That's a lot of Bs. Two attack and then tech, strength, you get plus two attack. He's really fun to work with. But there's no other tech and strength in the HQ except for the uh, uncommon Iron Fist Daredevil that I can't take. And then we got uh, Bullets Flying Bob Hiding which is two and a half recruit, excessive violence, draw a card. When, I, when I'm involved in excessive violence, I'm usually the victim. Bob is a really funny hero set. Okay, so the best early pickups would be Polaris or Bob because Polaris is gonna be great against these uh, bridge builders once they get shards. Um, Weapons Master is the most expensive thing I can take, but again, I don't know if any artifacts are going to show, in which case I've just recruited a two attack card. So. My gut says to take Electromagnetic Pulse as the second most expensive thing here first and use that to um, ping off some of these bridge builders before they get too crazy. And maybe some of the uh, other villains there too. Um, the cool thing about Piercing Energy and the Bonded villains, I gotta double check on this again, is if uh, uh, Life Foundation bonds with an officer, I only have to care about the total VP and then I can choose the one to defeat. So I can use that and then get the officer. I, I think that's the way it should work. So I'm going to start by taking Electromagnetic Pulse. Can't ignore that. Can't ignore that there. And then, all right, there's another Polaris with the left-hand side. Although it doesn't necessarily need to go together. I'd rather have some more ranged cards. Here we go. Right-hand side is three and three. And turn two is going to be... All right, we got our first Life Foundation. Life Foundation this is Agony Ambush. Reveal the top three cards of the villain deck. A villain you revealed symbiote bonds with Agony. Put the rest back in any order. And then escape. Each player reveals a covert hero or gains a wound. Top three cards of the villain deck. That's two cards. Here's three. Let's do them one at a time. This will be fun. So we've got uh, Dr. Carlton Drake. we got an officer. And we have a scheme twist. So I have to pick one of these two. I think I'm going to bond with the officer. Because... 
we're put in that situation that I talked about. They are going to be six attack plus dark memories together, which is going to be a lot, but only three piercing energy as needed to take them out. If I bond with Dr. Carlton Drake, they're going to be an eight attack villain. So even... I don't, I'm not going to have a lot of dark memories early, so with the officers, it's going to be easier to defeat. So let me, because these are officers in the villain deck, I'm going to put them back with uh, the twist on the bottom. And they got to keep in mind what the twist is as well. So the twist here says a Black Widow enters and play another card from the villain deck. So it's not going to affect this Black Widow. So let me go ahead and bond Agony with the officer. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, I want to I wanna know the final ruling from you guys on this can I piercing energy this bonded villain I think the answer is yes because combined they do have a printed VP value which is the one on agony you combine both of them but piercing energy cares if there is a printed VP value since this is one villain I think it does work and I think most of you are going to agree <laughs> resubscribe that is not how you do a hydrate uh, but uh, I'm going to take the Hydra anyway. Thank you so much, Wango. It's a long time no see, by the way. I think yes is the... So whatever I get to do, you all get to do it. I think that's the way it's going to work. All right, it's valid. So that is... Uh, I hope I get some more piercing energy for them. Uh, and they're going to change their attack based on Dark Memories. Won't worry about that yet. I got three attack and three recruit, though. <laughs> Lurkers are very welcome. Uh, so here we go. Let's play all our stuff, and let's hit the bridge builders, because we can't hit them right now. All right, everybody agrees. That's a good place to be. Um, here we go. So they just fight KO one of your heroes. Let's go ahead and uh, fight them for three and KO one of our operatives at the start here. Uh, take them out. So long. And then three recruit is what we have left. Um, hmm. Okay, so I've got the Bruce Banner and the Bob card that we already looked at. Um, I've also got Polaris. This Polaris has a Soaring Flight to recruit and then Covert when you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn. Draw an extra card. This might work better with um, Bob than the other Polaris cards because of the Covert Trigger. It's also a great early one to have. Brains and Bronze is good, but I don't think I want it this early. Drufus, I think we will. He's prevalent enough. So, um, I'm gonna have... Bob's probably gonna show up a lot. I think he's gonna show up a lot, so I need somewhere for him to go. Um, if I do Soaring Flight, I know what's gonna be in my next hand. I will have a lot of Recruit. There's only one Soldier. So if I Soaring Flight this, it becomes an... Uh, an extra card for my next hand, so I'm gonna have seven recruit if I soaring fight Polaris right now, because I'll have five in hand and then two from this, which will be great if a rare pops up. So I think I'm gonna do that, and hopefully the HQ will change. Uh, left hand side is gonna do another recruit. I don't know of what though, but I'm gonna take that shot. Even if I fail, I can get the uh, the uncommon uh, Iron Fist Daredevil. So let's go ahead and recruit and soaring flight. Oh, actually, I forgot I have an animation for this. Hopefully it doesn't break everything and everything shuts down. I think I can do it correctly. Here we go. Let's ride the magnetic waves. All right. And uh, there, there she is. All right. She's going to my hand. Next hand is an extra card. Next turn, because that's how soaring flight works. And that costs me three. And all right. There's an artifact. All right. That uh, now I can do the artifact thing. But we'll see if I want to. Right? So I can take both of these. We'll come back around to that. So here is my next hand. It is Polaris, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that's a seven recruit. If I'm lucky enough to see a rare pop up, I'm gonna be happy. If that rare costs seven, that is not eight. Turn three is gonna be that Dr. Carlton Drake that appeared. He's got five attack, and you fight him and each instinct and tech hero. Currently in the HQ costs one less this turn. We would be pretty good for taking those uh, Lady Sif cards. Now, unfortunately, I can't fight anything for three attack, so that's going to go nowhere. I got three recruit, though. So I took Electromagnetic Pulse, Piercing Energy, Range card. There's nothing here that directly works great with that, but I think this might be a time to take Brains and Brawn because I'll recruit it, I'll shuffle it in, it won't affect the... Uh, initiates dark memories but it won't really work with electromagnetic pulse either thank you for the water so let's see there's not an excellent option uh, I'd rather save the lady sift card to the right in case the right side wants to go that route 
I could take Bob, but he's better with the Covert I already took. So I'm going to take a, take a chance here and take Brains and Brawn. And then maybe build up a Bruce Banner deck over here with some Piercing Energy. If that's what the HQ gives me. All right. We got Crush Puny Weaklings. So I guess I'm going to do that. Uh, maybe not the best idea. That's a lot of classes for the Dark Memories. But we'll see. If I get six recruit in my hand right now, which is going to be really hard because I didn't recruit any recruit cards. I'm going for Crush Puny Weaklings. But if not, we'll see what the HQ looks like. Maybe just a bunch of Bruce Banner with that one Polaris card. There's a good chance I could not see any more. Yeah, look at that. There's only two recruit and four attack. This doesn't do anything. By the way, I like how um, I did pick the Spider-Man mats and we got the Life Foundation. So it kind of works. Look at all that recruit. We got that twist that we talked about. That's the last thing I knew about. So here we go. A Black Widow Initiate enters the city from the officer stack. It is another standard officer. Play another card from the villain deck. It's going to be a Master Strike this time. <laughs> now it's coming on strong. Here we go. Uh, this strike enters the city as a graveyard location. Eight attack. This says this gets plus three attack with a villain here. It's worth six BP. Then if there are at least three location cards in the city, at least each player gains a wound. The good thing about this, everybody, is that this does not push the city. So it's not going to affect escapes directly. So um, although, well, let's just look. Okay, let's zoom, zoom out for a second. Put the uh, graveyard where it is and give it its attack. So we've got an eight attack graveyard right there. And we're going to be zoomed out for probably quite a while. So there's my uh, KO pile and everything else is great. Okay, so let's play all my recruits that I've got. I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven... I have options. Let's look at the divided Daredevil because we didn't get to look at it yet. This is uh, Danny Rand as Daredevil here. We got Hidden Identity. Three Recruit. The next tier we recruit this turn goes on top of your deck or your wall crawl it basically. Revealed Identity is uh, zero plus attack. You get pl one plus attack for each different cost of hero you have. That could work pretty well over here on the right. And it's a very good card. Three Recruit is a great card. It's a great card to have early. Alternatively, alternatively, I can go like this and I can go Dimensional Blade and Weapons Master together. And then focus on, um, focus on that. And that would use up all my recruit. And that would clear up two HQ spaces. Left hand side's got two recruit to work with. So it's not going to do that much. Although I could just scrap the whole idea and take Dimensional Blade to the left so I can recruit something for two. And then once it's an artifact, it'll be thrown and be out in the field most of the time. Not getting in the way of my strategy. I think the smartest thing to do here... is to take the divided card because it's going to probably be a while until I can clear that out. Weapons Master is a little bit easier to recruit. Plus, the three recruit is very tempting. I do have a lot of it already. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take the divided card instead of the two uh, artifact cards, and we'll see if later I can build for it. Cost me six. And all right, there's Hulkbuster armor. All right, left-hand side is definitely going towards the uh, Bruce Banner side of things. That means left side is going to want to get... If I can get Crush Puny Weaklings, I'm going to want to get some Henchmen defeated on the left-hand side. Because that'll ramp up the more Sedera Maria I defeat. And unfortunately, the first one went to the right-hand side. So, Right-hand side is going to build up with what, what I've got left. Speaking of what I got left, I ended up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 recruit, which is cool. But I am running out of attack. I'm not getting enough attack to hit things I need to hit. The city looking like this, it's not great. I can only hope for more locations. I got four attack, which won't hit anything except for the officer. Um, turn five is going to be a bystander going to the officer. So these have three attack plus dark memories. There is n there are no cards in my uh, victory pile, my discard pile. Sorry, it's not it's not blood frenzy. It's dark memories. That's the, that's the newest expansion. So I've got four attack. I'll play it, and I can hit the officer for for uh, for three just to double triple check. The graveyard does not affect the attack of the villain underneath it. Um, the graveyard gets plus three. Um, and Grim Reaper gets buffed by the graveyards, which will which will change, but the villains do not get buffed. Just wanted to triple check on that. So I'm going to take out the officer, and where is she going? Now that I've rescued this Black Widow initiate, should I send her undercover or gain her? Left-hand side is really hurting for recruit right now. No, they're hurting for attack, not recruit. No, wait. 
What do I have? Bruce Banner and nope. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna I'm gonna gain the officer. I do need a little more recruit over here, and I get the bystander as well. I probably won't be doing that too much. I've got two recruit. Question is, do I want to take Lady Sif's artifact? You throw her, you throw it, you get uh, plus, you don't throw her, you throw the blade, you get plus one recruit and one attack. Uh, this won't hurt me if I leave it out and I'm trying to get Bruce Banner combos. But it is going to kind of want to go with Weapons Master. But again, I don't know how many artifacts I'm going to see. Um, in the For the spirit of moving the HQ along, um, I do want Artifact of Iron Fist. So, well, hold on. If I were to recruit it right now, the purpose would be to move the HQ along. If I didn't, that would be for what you said, to take it with Iron Fist over there for the cost, etc. Yep, it's, it's going to be a two cost that's always out. But there are four more of these. Because it is a common. And I only need the one to be always out. So I think this one... How how much do I want to move the HQ? I think I can spare to leave it there maybe for one turn. But if I keep getting stuck, I'm not going to leave there too long. So let's let's take a sidekick instead this turn. But the next chance I have to recruit this with nothing else, I'm probably going to take it. If I can't. So let me shuffle up the sidekick stack since this is the first... Sidekick of the game. I love sidekicks. Setup B is not going to have any but the standard. By the way, in case you're wondering why Setup B uses standard sidekicks, even though Secret Wars Volume 1 is not... Most of the time, it's not part of the setup. It's because everybody wanted sidekicks in that setup, in Setup B. So I said, hey, you can use them. Sidekicks are probably one of the easiest things to proxy. You just need 15 of any card, and whenever it pops up, you play it for drawing two cards, and you put it away. That's it. So, um, I'm going to get a sidekick. It's going to be Throg. Give me more recruit. New hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's five recruit and two piercing. I can't hit anything here with the piercing energy, but maybe a henchman will pop up. Left side is going to want those, so I'm taking Bruce Banner. But I don't know if I'm going to see any more of him. You never know. Turn six is another, another Master Strike. Okay. So that's going to become another 8 attack graveyard, which is going to buff him up. But as far as preventing early escapes, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. But my third location comes out, and then he's going to start giving out wounds. But the good news is, hopefully the third location will be a Master Strike, so he can only give out three wounds. I could get another location with the uh, Lethal Legion, but who knows. All right, um, right hand side's got a bunch of recruit. Got four and six recruit. Now I've already decided I want Bruce Banner to go on the left, and now I have that Daredevil Iron Fist card, so I do want a lot of costs. So Weapons Master is a five cost, and especially since I also do want Dimensional Blade, I am going to lean into throwing Weapons Master and the artifacts here on the right as well. Just focus on the, uh, the the attack strength Bruce Banner on the left with maybe some piercing. Yes, I agree with you. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this master for five. It's an early five cost. It's uh, going to help with the artifacts we get later. Great. And there's Roundhouse Sidekick Daredevil. I love that card name because it has to do with sidekicks. And there it is. Only uh, two different card costs here, but that will change. I got three, four, five recruit. And I can KO a lot of uh, operatives because I have one card that has three recruit on it. Which is uh, pretty decent. Why is she still there? Go away. I recruited you. There. Okay. Here we go. Two, three, four, five. I gotta keep in the habit of keeping these to the left because we're zoomed out. Turn seven is another officer with the dark memories that we talked about before. But I have no attack, so I won't worry about that. Um, I've got five recruit and two piercing energy. Where is my piercing energy die? Here it is. I can't use it on anything, but it's cool to look at. Two piercing energy right there. So I can take Hulkbuster armor. I think this is what I want to take. But let's look at both of this and uh, Runhouse sidekick just because we haven't looked at them yet. So Hulkbuster armor is two plus attack, two plus recruit. You may KO a wound from your hand or discard. Probably if you do, you get plus two recruit, which is going to help once Grim Reaper starts passing those out. Plus on his other cards. We've also got Roundhouse Sidekick, which is to attack. Choose a number and then reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is that cost, gain a sidekick. This, of course, works great with the other side where Daredevil lets you basically wall crawl something. Gain sidekicks that way. So I'm going to go with Hulkbuster Armor to prevent those wounds later, to get rid of those wounds later. 
and give me some more tech cards. Some tech cards at all. I have the uh, the dual class one though. No, not the dual class one. I want the dual class trigger. And then, all right, another weapons master for the right hand side. If I can get my hands on it, yeah, definitely uh, can't pierce this. No print VP. Carlton's got three. This is three. Mastermind's at six VP. And then you can't pierce the master strikes because not, number one, they're not villains. Number two, they don't have any printed VP, so you can double not hit them. There's brains and brawn and the shield agent. Let's see if I get the other Bruce Banner in hand. Another brains and bond would be nice. So uh, if you don't know, the Infinity Saga has the uh, irregular card distribution. So the commons, the one with the four full borders, have three copies each versus the five that card sets normally do. The uncommons like this have two each, and the rare, there's still one. It's the same distribution in the Marvel Studios Guardians of the Galaxy. So there's only two other brains and bronze in that hero deck, make it less likely for me to see them. Got the piercing back. All right. That's going to work great against... Uh, one of those henchmen that might pop up. There we go. We're all set. Turn eight is another one. Speaking of which, they're going to enter, and nobody's in the bridge. They're going to go right to the bridge. City's getting full, though. Um, I've got three attack and two recruit. And let's look at what my options are. Once again, I can... Look at that upside down. <laughs> I can get uh, three recruit. Wall crawl something for five. It'll let me get Weapons Master again. Or I can play Reveal Identity, get two more attack for having two different costs, and I can hit something. Both are good options. Um, seeing as how the city's filling up, I kind of want to hit Dr. Carlton Drake. That will make Weapons Master cheaper, but only by one, and it will make it cost four, which I still can't get. It will let me get a one-cost dimensional blade, so that might be what I want to do. Hold off on Weapons Master. I do have the recruit to get it later. And just go um, hit Dr. Carlton Drake. Um, and then left side is going to pierce the bridge builders. And have three other attacks. So maybe hit an officer as well. So seeing as how left side can hit two things. Here's the thing. Um, I could end up with a, some twists that could chain and push things out. Which is always scary. And for my score, I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to play a little conservatively. I could take Weapons Master, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take the Reveal Identity side. Give me a two attack for the two different costs I've got, and we'll do what I said I was going to do. I'm choosing not to take a risk at this moment. Uh, we'll take out Dr. Carlton Drake for five attack. He makes all tech and instinct currently HQ cost one less. Although that could be pretty good for the left-hand side, too, to cheapen the, the strength cards. And the tech, uh, tech cards, I mean. But uh, I'm still going to do it now. Take him out for five. Okay, that means uh, Weapons Master... Um, I'm sorry, Dimensional Blade. They both cost one less, but Weapons Master is four. I'm going to spend one to get Dimensional Blade. And we'll see what's left. Whoop. Top of my hero deck just fell down. Can't take anything else. But I did clear a spot in the city. And we'll see what I end up with. I'll probably get five recruit again pretty soon. I got to build up enough to hit those locations. If I can hit the location, then empty location for eight soon, I can avoid some wounds early on. And I'll take Weapons Master soon. So two of those, if I have an artifact just sitting out there, it's gonna, they're going to be eight attack together, which is enough to take out a single location. Two, three, four, five, six. Still a lot of graves, though. I got I to gotta get some KOing. Right now, the only thing I got that can do that are the henchmen. Okay, turn nine <clears throat> is a twist. And good, I'm glad I cleared the city because that's happening. So here we go. A black little initiate enters the city from the officer stack. It is, ooh, it's a special officer's grant ward. Play another card from the villain deck. And it is swordsman coming in. Swordsman comes in. He gets plus three attack. Well, there is a carnival location in the city. There are not, there's no carnival in the graveyard. So he's only at four attack right now. Ambush swordsman in each location in the city. Each capture a bystander. Let's pass those out. Swordsman first. It's going to be the Engineer, who gives me some KO power, potentially. And then each graveyard gets a location. So Sunspot is hanging out in the graveyard. Right up here. There he is. And the second location is going to go ahead and... You can't even see Sunspot. Let me offset him to the side here. So you can see. There we go. Second one is going to be Magma. Oh, we got two new mutants hanging out in the graveyard together. They're each in a separate graveyard, just really close together. I don't know why they are. Um, okay, let me uh, pierce something because the city is now full. And that's what I was worried about. I'm glad I did fight the city because otherwise I would have had an escape right now. 
So uh, let's uh, play the two attack uh, electromagnetic pulse. Um, the only thing I can pierce is going to be the henchman. So we'll get to that in a moment. We'll play my three attack. I also have no discard pile, so I don't have any Dark Memories bonus on these initiates. So I can clear two things just like I did before. And let's play my three recruit because I'm going to be able to uh, get rid of all of those in a second. Not all of them. Two of them. So we're going to go ahead. I, I can get Grant Ward here, by the way, which is very, very good. Um, let's take this out for one piercing energy. Hey, one of my heroes, the shield agent goes away. What I love about playing um, this scheme with the special officers is obviously you get to pick and choose the ones you gain. Uh, that's very helpful. And uh, they're gone for th for one piercing energy. Now with my three attack on this side, I'm trying to build tech. Let's take out Grant Ward. Here's what Grant Ward does, by the way. We're going to gain him. He's got two recruit. You may send this hero undercover. If you do, KO okay, another shield hero from your hand. I'm going to gain him by defeating him. Should technically blow him up here. Get some more tech. Um, and here's what I have left. Three recruit. I don't really think I want either this Polaris or this Bob card. And I don't want an officer. So I think I'm going with another sidekick here. And letting the left uh, right hand side pick up one of these three costs or, or daredevil probably because they, they have four recruit mm, okay yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get a sidekick i don't want to saturate my deck too much with recruit i've already got enough so let's do it we've got hairball i would love some uh, range to activate polaris or see more polaris that's not uh ride of the magnetic waves in the hq also, I want to zoom in, so I gotta hit these graveyards. Right hand side. City is catching up to me. Turn 10 is going to be Scream. Wish I had a scream sound effect, kind of. I also kind of glad I don't. Uh, ambush, reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it's a henchman or life foundation villain, it's symbiote bonds with Scream. Top card of the villain deck is a bystander. So, joke's on you, Scream. You're just a four attack villain, which I can't fight this turn. And we got a bias center coming in next, which is nice. Buying me a little time, but I don't want that to go to waste. So for recruit, I can take uh, Bob's recruit card, Polaris's recruit card, or I can take a roundhouse sidekick. And seeing the way the city's going and seeing how much attack I've got and seeing how this can work great with the wall crawl effect that Daredevil does, I'm going to go ahead and take roundhouse sidekick without thinking about it too much. Take it for four. And uh, there we go. Another electromagnetic pulse. Happy to see that, and I've got two attack that won't do anything. Now about these officers, I have bigger decks, so I have significant number of classes in the discard pot. This is a good hand right now. So the officers are going to get stronger now. But at least I got a sidekick or a side a bystander coming in next. It is the comic shop keeper who might let me gain some stuff. Going right to scream here. Not bonded, just gained or just captured. Uh, okay. So I've got uh, Throg's bonus is going to work. So I'm going to get four attack. And I'm going to get six recruit. All great. And I can get Crush Puny Weakling. So let's, let's play this out. I've got two, four recruit. I'll play Throg, who has the once per turn. If you made at least six recruit, you get two attack. Playing off of Thor's effect. So I will play that. Get rid of the Froggy. Thank you very much. And two more attack. I'm at four. Let's swap these out. So for four attack, let's check uh, the discard pile. I can hit Scream, but also I've got ranged strength tech covert everything but instinct so if we wanted to keep track the shield officer is at seven attack with dark memories which is actually an initiate so initiates at four attack no carnival so we got six seven four and four um i could also hit the engineer if i wanted to before there's a location that might be the best thing i can do because um swordsman's gonna get buffed and scream won't get buffed And I get to maybe KO the top card of my deck if it's a zero cost. Let's go ahead and hit Swordsman instead of Scream for four before he gets buffed. And uh, all right, he's just defeated. Thank you for the water. I'll handle that in just a second after I take care of the Engineer here. Engineer, top card of my deck, it costs zero. So there we go, we got a KO. I was hoping for that. A little bit of deck thinning. This tip is in honor of you, MVL Markers. Thank you for the water. So far, Setup's fun, but I can't forget Grim Reaper's buffed right now. He's at 9, 11, 13. Once I get close to 9, I'll start tracking it. Uh, six recruit. Crush Peeny Weaklings is right here for me. I can take Electromagnetic Pulse later. 
Uh, it's three plus attack and then tech. You get plus one attack for each henchman in your victory pile. Right now, I have one henchman in my victory pile. And uh, let me actually start keeping track of that. I'll put like a little one up here. That's one henchman. The left hand side is victory pile. Now I got to focus fire on those henchmen on the left hand side with that piercing energy or otherwise so that I can really buff up crush puny weaklings and hopefully thin the deck enough, get enough tech cards so it'll work. And I think I can do that. All right, and there's another dimensional blade. All right, so the artifacts are showing. I didn't know if they would. Okay, we've got one Hulkbuster armor. That's four recruit. That's enough for Polaris. I kind of like using uh, the tech strength Bruce Banner with a little flare of Polaris in there, just the piercing energy cards. Because uh, I got two of them, I can draw a card. Hey, thank you for the follow. Did you make a new account? Five, six. All right, we got some piercing, we got some recruit, we got some attack, a little bit of everything. We'll see how it works out for me. I need, I need two of these to hit uh, the bonded villains. Some of the bonded villains. Not all of them. This is a good answer. Okay, great. All right, turn 12 is Phage. So Phage is going to do a symbiote bond, a villain from the escape pile, or your victory pile symbiote bonds. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the bridge builders back in. So this is going to be interesting because this not only gives the left-hand side a chance to get the bonds, but I'm pretty sure they're entering the city again, so they're ambush triggers. They haven't done this that often. So... They're going to come in, they're going to bond with Phage, and they're going to do their ambush again, which means they're going to go to the bridge. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's the way it works. Every time a villain enters the city, for whatever reason, their ambush triggers. Uh, so this is going to be a six attack villain in the bridge now. And left hand side has a chance to get this uh, henchman to buff up Bruce Banner. Yep, great, okay. Okay, so I'll play the artifact. Again, when I throw it, it gives me plus one attack and plus one recruit. Hold on to that in just case I need it. Um, I've got uh, two attack, and I've got one, uh, three recruit, no covert trigger. And again, we're here with the options with the divided card. I'll put it on the right, correct side. So, reveal identity. I have how many costs? Six, three, zero, two. That gives me four attack, which will put me up to six, which will let me hit something big in the city, which is probably the way I want to go. If I didn't do that, I would get three more recruit. But, uh, and I can also throw Lady Sif for seven total attack, but that attack is too big to ignore, especially with the way the city looks. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Reveal Identity side, getting four attack for the four different costs. That was a great early pickup for me. It's already paying off. So six total. Yep, that's a six, three, zero, two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I throw the blade to the bottom of my deck, I'll get seven attack and four recruit. Let's see if I need that. Um, the shield officer is how much attack, right? The uh, discard pile's got to only one class. So the initiate is only at plus one. It's at four. So with my max at seven, I can't hit two things. If I did throw the blade, I could hit a graveyard. But I also don't want to escape. So I don't think it's important to hit the graveyards right now. Um, if I hit one of these bonded villains, it's going to cost me nine attack to clear them completely. Unfortunately, so if I hit phage or I hit agony, I can't clear a space. So we've got left hand side's got uh, one attack, two attack, and that two piercing energy. So if I do clear phage, if I do clear phage, oh yeah, agony is even stronger. She's got plus one, which I can get around with the dimensional blade. Symbiote Bonds. You know what I'm talking about? So she's at 7, um, which I could get if I throw the blade. Left-hand side, again, is going to have 2 attack, which isn't going to be enough for anything. 2 piercing, which is going to be enough for the henchman. So since the only thing that the left-hand side can hit is the henchman, I think I'm going to want to hit Phage so that left-hand side can pierce the energy that bridge builders. Otherwise, left-hand side is going to just have nothing to hit. Which is rough. Um, I wish I had one more attack over here. I could hit an officer too, but I can't. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to spend six attack. We're going to leave the dimensional blade out. We're going to take hit the uh, co uh, combined phage, bridge builders, and take out phage to our victory pile. Leaving the bridge builders there, I can piercing energy next turn. 
Um, with my three recruit, I'm going to go ahead and take another dimensional blade. And end the turn with a Hulkbuster armor and the HQ. I want the other Bruce Banner card. You know, the one with attack. All right. So we got Weapons Master coming in. To give me four attack because I have the dimensional blade out. We'll see how much I got. So right now my max attack is four, five if I throw the artifact. Then that's six. That's going to be seven. And that's going to be eight. So eight max attack on the right hand side coming up. Although I don't think I can afford to hit a graveyard. I wish this hand wasn't so hodgepodge. Turn 13 is okay. Another location. So good and bad. Good, it's not going to advance the city bad the next master strike if i don't clear a location is going to give me wounds whenever you fight a villain here in the gorilla cult each other player reveals their hand and discards a tech card this is going above the rooftops all right so let's go ahead and do the piercing energy first actually let's do two piercing energy we'll play one shield agent all right and then we're going to go ahead and hit the bridge builders for one piercing energy and k one of my heroes is going to be the agent i just played Take him out. So now, left-hand side has got two. All, the only henchmen to show up. So there is a chance left-hand side to get all the henchmen and make that Bruce Banner card very good when it comes up. But I've also got one more recruit. I've got Hulkbuster armor here. Two more recruit. I make KO wound from my hand or discard pile and get plus two recruit. There are no wounds out, so that's not going to happen. And I've got two total attack, which aren't even going to go anywhere, so I won't even play them. So, yes, nothing else to pierce. Um, no dark memories right now. Doesn't matter, though. And I can take the other Hulkbuster armor, or I could take Polaris's Electromagnetic Pulse. I think I'm going to go with Pulse instead, because I'd like them both to show up together. They give me four piercing energy. That really opens up what I can do with it. I have enough recruit right now. There's another Daredevil. I want more of the Bruce Banner cards to show up. You don't always get what you want, you know? Let's move forward. Let's move these dice out of the way. Over here, just so you know they're not on anything right now. Ooh, that is not... Ooh, okay, so I got Crush Beanie Weaklings, but no tech. So if Hairball can draw attack, I'll get two extra attack with Crush Beanie Weaklings. If I'm lucky, that'll happen. Because left-hand side has a decent attack this turn if I decide to throw everything at eight, if I calculated it correctly last time. All right, Twist. Scary. City's a little bit full. So here we go. Another officer enters. It's going to be a standard. And play another card from the villain deck. It's going to be a Master Strike. <laughs> Wounds happen this time, but let's do this in order. So the first thing that happens is it becomes a graveyard. And remind me, by the way, what happens if I recall correctly? If the there's if each space has a location and another location is up, is it correct that you KO the one with the lowest attack and replace this with that one, or replace that with this one? I have to check on that. It's been a while, but anyway, yeah, it becomes another eight attack. Great. Okay, that's it. So we're going to lose the Gorilla Cult if that last strike happens and I haven't hit any. I'll look it up if I have to, but I think uh, chat's going to tell me. You guys are going to tell me. Anyway, so the Graveyard comes in. It's worth 6 VP, etc. All that good stuff. Then if there are at least three locations of cards in the city, each player gains a wound. So wounds do happen, and they happen now. Looks like two standard wounds go out. Hopefully Bruce can get rid of the ones on the left. All right, yes is the answer. So we'll just have to wait until that happens. The lowest... I replaced the lowest one. So yeah, it would be the Gorilla Cult that gets replaced in this case. If it's a fifth, if it's a, uh, the fifth strike, fourth and fifth. Okay, let's put out another dimensional blade. Let's start with Weapons Master. Weapons Master gets plus two attack. If you control any artifacts and I control two of them, doesn't ramp up that way, I wish it did, but I control any, so I get four total attack. Soldiers up to six. I could throw both blades to get eight total attack. Do I need to do that? Um dark memories there isn't any all i got in my discard pile right now is a wound it can even be the one that was played so if i have five look if i have if i had all eight eights graveyards in this in the it, this has happened so early to me if i had all uh, five graveyards in here and i pulled a gorilla cult that gorilla cult would get ko'd right because it's the lowest attack one of all six that are there um okay so i can go three and three that's actually a pretty good this is a pretty good turn to do that I can hit both officers for three attack only and send them both undercover. I can hit Agony once, or I can hit each individual officer. Let's clear the city some more. I could hit the Gorilla Cult, but um, it might just get KO'd anyway. If I can get nine attack, I would have hit Agony this turn. But, um... 
That's true. I will have to. Each player will uh, discard a card. Well, it's just fine. I got two well, operatives, operatives in my hand. Each other player reveals their hand and discards a tech card. Oh, I see. Left hand side discards a tech card. So yeah, I will lose Crush Puny Weaklings, but it's not going to be activated this turn. So let me see. Is that worth it? If I do discard that, what am I going to be left with? Um, one, two, three attack. I can use that to... Well, not do... I could maybe hit Scream if Hairball draws well. If I'm lucky, Hairball will draw attack, and I'll get Crush Puny Weaklings, which is going to be three, four, five, six, seven. I could have a good turn. So I think in so yeah maybe to play it safe what I'll do is I'll throw one blade and I'll hit scream and an officer, so that way I won't have to hit anything in the cold. <laughs> Thank you. And I might gain something from the comic shopkeeper. Let's do that. Let's throw a single dimensional blade. Give me one attack and one recruit. Then I can avoid the discard completely and still clear two things. So let's take out this officer. Nothing in my discard pile except for the wound. So I'm gonna defeat it and I will choose to send it under cover. More VP for me. I'm at four left, and let's clear another space by hitting Scream, who is just going to get defeated. Easy. And the Comic Shopkeeper activates here. Look at the top three cards of the hero deck. The player of your choice gains one of them that costs three or less. Okay. Ooh, we got Winged Helm, Dual Existence, all of them. Okay, so I think Winged Helm is an uncommon. It's very good. Check this out. Throw an artifact, you may throw this to get plus one attack. During any player's turn, if a player would gain a wound, you may throw this to prevent that wound and draw two cards instead. That's really good. Um, it's also a strength card. It's also a three-cost artifact for Iron Fist. Dual Existence, just look at the top two cards of your deck, draw one and put the other back. It's pretty good. But I'm going to have the right side gain the Winged Helm and put Dual Existence on top of the hero deck. That's a good That's a good pickup. Pick it up an uncommon with the Comic Shop Keeper. I guess he had the Winged Helm land around his Comic Shop. Probably pretty expensive, but he was very thankful. Uh, okay. Let's play my other operatives. My operatives at all. And I've got three recruit there. I could throw the other blade for four recruit and get Ron House sidekick. But then I won't have an artifact out just in case I draw the uh, Iron Fist. He didn't know what he had. He undervalued it. I can Soaring Flight Polaris to get some more recruit. Or I can just take Bob. Poor Bob sitting there not doing anything. Excessive violence, draw a card. That might happen over here, actually. You know what? I've had a couple turns where I've had enough for excessive violence. I'd rather take the roundhouse sidekick, but I'm going to go ahead and take Bob. Just throw him a bone here. Take bullets, flying Bob, hiding. <laughs> it's, I threw it. It didn't fall apart, so I'm going to guess it's not a replica. And there's that dual existence we uncovered, leaving out Dimensional Blade. Yeah, I'm glad I kept the artifact out, because now I have four, six, three, zero, two, five costs for Iron Fist. Good to have two of them. Okay, moving on over. Let's see if Hairball can uh, get me some tech. Turn 15. I'm sending, I'm sending out the cat to get some machinery. Um, another twist. These twists are really filling up the city often. Okay, so we got Initiate. It's another standard. Another card from the villain deck is going to be uh, another location. Here we go. The Carnival of Wonders appears. Thank you. We already got rid of the Swordsman. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player chooses a bystander from the victory pile to be captured by Carnival of Wonders. So we are full up on locations. Pop this over here so I don't get, it. I get that mixed up. All right. Let's see if I can pull a rare tech from my deck. Draw a card. It's going to be an officer. So not a tech at all, but nice try hairball. But it does give me one, two, four recruit this turn. And... Uh, one, two, three, four, five more attacks. So I'm at six. So six and four. Um, for six attack. Okay, does the right hand side have a tech card for the Gorilla Cult? It does not. So if now if now if I hit oh let me check the uh, dark memories. I've got uh, a tech and a range. So both of these are plus two. They're at five right now. So I can only hit one thing anyway. So I think what I'm gonna do is hit the hit Agony. I could hit the Carnival of Wonders if I don't want to lose that VP, but uh, oh, Agony is also buffed. So can I hit Agony at all? Where's my other die? It's an eight, so I can't. Hmm, okay. Well, that makes my decision for me. I'm gonna hit one of these officers. 
And I'll hit the one in the Gorilla Cult just so I don't have to uh, suffer the effects of the other side. No tech card over there. It's each other player. All right. Yeah. Or I can hit one of these locations. I can hit the Gorilla Cult for some VP. But I have to decide. There are only two twists left, though. There's only two twists left. So the city becoming super full is not as much of a risk. It could happen next turn with an unfortunate series of events. Right hand, right -hand side's got a bunch of attack, though. And I could start getting some VP from these locations. Although I could just not see a strike, I hit those locations later. So I'm going to I'm gonna play it safe again. Let's spend uh, five of my attack to take out the officer. In the Gorilla Cult, right-hand side's got no tech. We're going to go ahead and uh, send this one undercover. That's more VP anyway. Okay, and for four recruit, I have another Hulkbuster armor. I'm going to get some wounds. I could use the recruit. I need the tech trigger. I don't really... Actually, I don't need that much recruit. I'm going to try to do as many KOs as I can. I will take it for one more tech just to increase the uh, saturation of tech in my deck. And then we got another Polaris. That's the last one I knew about. And we got Grant Ward there. All right. Do I have a strength card in my deck to trigger Bruce Banner? Oh, boy. I don't. I need some strength cards. Shuffling that up to trigger Brains and Brawn. I'm really not seeing a lot of Bruce in the HQ, which means I'm going to have to take a lot of cards from here. I mean, uh, the three that aren't Polaris, I do want. One, two. Okay, that's not a lot of attack. That's one, two, three, four, five, six recruit. So maybe I can uncover something nice. Who knows? This turn, I've got some decent attack. So let's see what happens. Turn 16 is a bridge builders. They go in. They pop into the sewers. They go to the bridge. They're going to wait there for the other side, even though I've got Carnival of Wonders. Question for, for, the, for the room. Carnival of Wonders says, when you fight, whenever you fight a villain here, each other player chooses the bias scanner from the victory pile to be captured by the Carnival of Wonders. Does that occur if I piercing energy defeat that villain? You do the fight effect, but is it a fight? I forget how these things are nested all the time. Anyway, um, let's look at this. So I've got the roundhouse sidekick. Choose a number, then reveal the top card of your deck. If the card is that cost, gain a sidekick. So I could use Hidden Identity to recruit a hero, put it on top, gain a sidekick, but I don't think that's worth it. I think what's worth it is maxing out my attack. So let's just uh, not officially play this. And, uh... Okay, so the word fight is right there. So that makes it pretty clear. Thank you. I, I, could, I, I would have guessed, I would have been wrong, that it was defeat. Because you get through fight restriction. But that's pretty clear. All right, reveal identity. Plus one attack for each different cost of hero you have. That's going to be 0, 3, 4, 6, and 2. So let's pretend I play this. It's going to be 5 attack, which is pretty good. And then that would give me 7, 8 if I threw the blade. And then if I was at 7, no, go back. There we go. Did I press something else? Um, okay. Seven attacks gonna let me. Oh, dark memories. Let's let's calculate that first. I've got uh, ooh a lot. Instinct, covert, strength. So these are at six, which makes agony at nine. That yeah, that's uh, seven. I can get eight. I want to leave the bridge builders to the left hand side. So I think I'm still going to. I, I, why would I hit one of these graveyards? I really do. And I could. Left-hand side doesn't have a lot of attack, though. Left-hand side's got uh, three attack, but no discard pile. So left-hand side could take out a shield officer. Easy. But no piercing of the uh, bridge builders right now. Yeah, only one special. It was uh, Grant War. That's it. So we'll see, if, we'll see if the last two twists are lucky enough. Or if they're in the villain deck. Now, Grim Reaper is buffed up by these graveyard so i'm gonna have to hit them at some point and i can hit maria when she's weaker so i think i'm gonna take a risk and i'm going to hit a graveyard i'm gonna throw the dimensional blade to the bottom for one attack and one recruit now let's see which graveyard do i want to hit uh, magma is a range card i'd rather she go to the left hand side oh actually sunspot 2 would be great i'm trying to fix that right now 
Let's hit the look hit the graveyard with no bystanders, because I'd rather both of these go to the left hand side. If I can get there. So we're gonna go ahead and take out uh, this graveyard. Oh, actually, there's a, hold on, there's a villain there. There's a villain there. There's a villain there. So oh, that's the wrong one. They're buffed up. Yeah, they're gonna be plus two. No, they're gonna be plus three. What was the villain there? So they're at eleven. So we'll just remember that. I don't want to change this to eleven each time. So eleven, eleven, and eight. So I mean, I could gain Sunspot over here, but again, I'd much rather gain him on the left hand side where the tech, where the strength is needed. So maybe I don't hit any of these graveyards because these these two are eleven. There's a villain there. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to unthrow my uh, thrown artifact. I don't need to throw it. So I'm back to seven, and I'll just uh, hit the officer like I originally was going to. Mm -hmm. For six. Those three classes, and we're going to go ahead and send her undercover. These epic graveyards are not kidding around. And I didn't play my recruit yet. Let's do that right now. Ooh, I got the Cobra trigger. I, this happened for once. So a two recruit and then covert, thanks to Daredevil. When you draw a new hand of cards, end of this turn, draw an extra card. That's gonna give me two, three, four, five recruit. Let me put my little card reminder die on the deck. And I can get another weapons master. Look at that. And I can draw an extra card. There's, oh, look at all that covert. If only I was empowered by covert. This stays out. I get to draw seven cards. A lot of, lot of uh, bookkeeping here in this setup. Okay, that's five. Hopefully the other two cards are better than, than that. Right-hand side is struggling with the KOs because I'm saving the henchmen for the left. Lacking. Are there any cards that have KO one of your cards in this hero deck? I don't actually recall if there are any. Um, doesn't Bob have one? At least... Somewhere in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I got the winged helm, but it's still not much as far as raw power here. Yeah, Bob has. Yeah, that's what I thought. Bob had one. This is uncommon. That's the one I'd want to see from Bob, but it's not showing up. You never get the cards you really want, right? So you don't need them. Turn 17 is another officer, another standard officer. So let's adjust. Speaking of officers, there are no cards in my discard pile. On his rare. Okay, wow. I would have I would have believed you about the uncommon. I thought it was that. So uh, no no dark memories buffs, which means I can uh, clear one officer, which is good. Um, I've got uh, one two three attack. Really wish I can get that sunspot. So Grant Ward, I'll play for two recruit. I'm not going to send him under cover yet. I need his tech trigger, his tech class to be there for the trigger. That gives me four and six recruit. I do want to take out uh, the Bridge Brothers soon, but uh, I'll take advantage of the fact that... Um, <laughs> that's right. As far as recruiting, I don't think I want any of these cards. Dual Existence doesn't hurt, but let's go ahead and take out the Officer for three. Epic Middle Management, yes. All right, let's send her undercover. For three attack. I didn't play, I didn't press this one, so I should have. Okay, now I can do a Recruit. Look at Dual Existence. It won't really hurt me to take on the left-hand side. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Draw one for the other back. So it's basically a draw card card. Doesn't really get in the way. So I'll take it and hope for a four cost to come up that I want. Um, it's going to be Weapons Master, which I can't take and don't want here. So I feel like um, I feel like Bruce in Infinity War when Hulk's not showing up. He's not showing up. Yes, the golden apples, right? That's that's hers. It has to be two rares, though. Very very rare KO ability. Uh, Roundhouse sidekick is decent, but it doesn't draw, and it might get in the way of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another sidekick because there could be some strength or tech ones that will help me out. And I didn't get one of those, but I did get the uh, standard sidekick, which is always welcome. Two, three, four, five, six. All right. I have a wound. And I have the KO wound. So look at all the recruit I've got this turn. It's a lot of recruit. It's gonna be. Two, four with the KO, six, seven. I don't remember how much those rares cost, but it would be cool to see one. I cost seven on that side. Okay, turn 18. He doesn't want to. No! <laughs> Lasher shows up. 
and Lasher's gonna do another symbiote bond with a henchman villain from my victory pile. Joke's on you, I don't have any. I gave him to the left-hand side, so you get nothing, you lose. Good day, symbiote. I'll play the winged helm as an artifact that's going to be again. You can throw it to get a plus one attack during any player's turn. If a player regain a wound, you may throw this to prevent that wound and draw two cards instead. Which is good, because left-hand side can deal with wounds, right-hand side can't. So I got three artifacts out. I've got two attack, and I've got three recruit. I could get throw all three artifacts to get a total of five attack, but I could just hit Lasher right now for the two attack I do have, and that's a space. It's going pretty well. I'm. Oh, where's where did I put? Um, where's the mastermind? Oh, here he is. <laughs> there he is. Um, it's going okay. I'm treading water a bit. I'm keeping the city at bay. But I haven't hit Grim Reaper at all, and he's buffed up a lot because of these locations, and he's going to get more. Trying to desperately build this up. Bruce Banner's not appearing. <laughs> like, I have control over him. Uh, let's uh, let's hit Lasher for two, just because we can. Get him out of there. Without having to throw anything. Save those for later. And. Now. If I don't recruit this and the other one, they're just going to be stuck there the whole game. So maybe what I could do is throw one blade to get four recruit and get a side, roundhouse sidekick. Or I can throw both blades to get another weapons master. That's actually not bad. Because I really don't want this. I'm going to do that to get a third weapons master because I do have a lot of artifacts. So I'm going to throw both dimensional blades. Give me two attack and two recruit. So two attack doesn't go anywhere. But I will spend the five recruit to get the other weapons master. Now I have three of them. I have... Three of the Weapons Masters with a lot of artifacts, which is good. And there's another Dimensional Blade. I will leave Winged Helm out and end my turn. There's a wound, and I, I've lost myself an extra cost, unfortunately, because I threw those weapons. But I did get a Weapons Master in the rotation. Something like that. I really want to saturate the right-hand side with a lot of good cards, because I'm not getting a lot of KO power this game on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, either, but... Bridge Brothers aren't really showing up that much. Um, yeah. So yeah, he gets plus two for each location in the city total, not just the graveyard. So that is true. He's at plus ten. Turn 19. Speaking of locations, we got Power Man, who gets plus three. Well, there's a prison location in the city, and there is not currently. His escape effect is each player puts a villain from their victory pile into the escape pile or gains a wound. A different Power Man. Okay, let's, uh, I have all this recruit, but nothing to recruit with it, really. I have two attack, which doesn't go anywhere. So let's at least KO the wound. So Hulkbuster armor, two recruit. I will KO the wound from my hand to get, uh, two more. I do have time to clear some away. And then five, six, seven recruit is what I end up with. And lo and behold, no rares for me to get. Only two attack that doesn't go anywhere. I like how I haven't seen a single shard yet because of the way the bridge builders are showing up and the way I'm defeating them. I'm really nervous. I, I really don't want to take too many cards I don't want because there's so little KO power in this setup. Although I will see more bridge builders, but I'd rather spend them on the on the gray cards, on the starters. So ride the magnetic waves. I don't want it all. I don't have the covert trigger that much at all. I don't need the two recruit. The artifacts, I could take the artifact. Yeah, if I did take anything, I would take the Dimensional Blade. Right-hand side's got a, a bunch of them. It is an artifact that will stay out. Roundhouse Sidekick. Yeah, exactly. That's why the one card I would take would be Dimensional Blade. It would just be taking that away from the other side, but it's still worth it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take one Dimensional Blade. Uh, earlier in the game, I already skipped a turn not taking it instead of a sidekick and I said next time I have the opportunity to do that I'm going to do it so I will I'll take dimensional blade for two and uh all right we got hydra halfwit which is a tech card hydra halfwit is one and a half attack over the top card of your deck if it's shield or hydra draw it that part's not the best but it is a tech card that can trigger things plus I do have still plenty of shield so I will almost somewhat regrettably take this to move things along and another dimensional blade I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna take the other one. There we go. Another blade. There we go. Hulk gets smashed. I want this one on the left hand side. 
Here it is. Two attack and then strength. You may gain a wound if you do KO up to two other cards from your hand and or discard pile. There's the KO power I wanted. So that's coming later. Finally, Bruce appears. That's one of his uncommons. There's only two of those. All right, look at that. I got double piercing energy. So I can take out something for four VP next turn, which means I can actually piercing energy agony no matter how much dark memories it's got on the left hand side. It's going to take raw attack to take out these uh, locations, though. Turn 20 is Living Laser, who gets plus attack if there's a maze location in the city, and though there is no maze right now. His fight effect is kind of rough. Each player reveals a range hero or gains a wound. Yeah, these are from uh, Snatch Cat slash Booyah in the Discord. He did a great job. They don't count for two reasons. They count. They don't count because they don't have printed VP, and they don't count because they're not villains. They're locations. So they, they double don't count. So, I, for example, I could not pierce Carnival of Wonders either, even though it has printed VP because it's not a villain. It's a location. Okay, so six attack for the Living Laser. Let's play Weapons Master. I do control the Winged Helm artifact, so I get four total attack. I've got uh, five. Yeah, they're interesting for sure. I would like to see locations return. Um, all right, so if I play Reveal Identity, that's going to give me at six, five, three, zero. That's four more attack. That put me up to nine. And I can throw the home for a tenth attack if I want. So I can hit... Um, so these are all 11 right now. So what makes the most sense to do here? Um... I can clear Agony this turn for six. Actually, no. How much Dark Memories? Only one class. So only one. So I can still do it. If I throw the Winged Helm, I can hit this for seven and then three more if I hit Agony. Um, and then left hand side is going to have that Piercing Energy and I can take out Power Man with it. So let's, let's do that. Um... Although I can't do a wound prevention if the Winged Helm's not out, but I think that's going to be worth it. So let's spend seven to hit the Bonded, Agony, and the Initiate, and we will take the Initiate and set it under cover. And let's throw the Winged Helm to get one attack. By the way, if I didn't mention this. Throwing a throwing a uh, throwing artifact means put it on the bottom of the of your deck. So now I got three attack. I'm gonna save the henchman for the left hand side. We'll take out agony. Um, yeah, no questions asked. Okay. I've got two recruit here, and I'm gonna sidekick for two. It's going to be lockjaw. Again, he would have been great for uh, Polaris on the left, but still good. You got an artifact, but not a lot of attack. Other, well, actually, no. I got weapons master with no artifacts, actually. So it's one, two, three only. I mean, throwing it was the right decision, but that does hurt me that turn. Okay, turn twenty-one is another initiate coming in. The city is not letting up. So let's go ahead and uh, do the combo with Polaris. First one gives me two piercing energy. Second one gives me two more piercing energy and a card draw, which means a reshuffle. So hold on. Do I want to do this? I have to, right? If I want to um, pierce something for four. So should I recruit first before I do this? I have... I might draw more recruits, so I'm going to say no. I will officially play the second pulse, and I'll shuffle my deck and draw, which means I won't see puny weaklings or either one of these for a while, which is going to hurt a little bit. But I'd rather use them now. And then maybe I can focus on KOing some things. Yeah, I still want to do this. And then I can hit uh, the henchman for straight up attack. And I'll also lose the um, Dark Memories bonus. Alright, so I'm drawing. I draw Hulk Buster armor. Okay. I don't have any wounds anywhere, but I do get to trigger Crush Puny Weaklings, which is cool. So I'll play the Hulk Buster armor for two recruit. And then if I play Crush Puny Weaklings now, I will get plus two for the two henchmen I've defeated. If I hit the Bridge Builders first, I will get plus three. So as far as my piercing energy, I'm pretty sure I want to use it on one of these well, on Power Man. If I do that, 
if I used it on the bridge builders first, I'd go down to three piercing energy, which I couldn't use on anything here. But then when I played Presh Pini Weaklings, I would get one, two, three, four, five, six attacks, seven. Yeah, still not worth it. I should I should still go with plan A, because I'll get uh, six attack anyway. So let's use the four piercing energy on Power Man. Um, it'll affect the, uh, the Gorilla Cult effect will come into play. Each other player reveals their hand and discards a tech card, but that's not going to affect the other side. So we're going to Piercing Energy, Power Man for four. Although let me look at the Carnival of Wonders effect before I do that. So they also have a, a thing. Each other player choosing to buy a standard from the victory pile to be captured. Yeah, I don't really care about that, so that's fine. Um, four Piercing Energy, take it out, Power Man, no fight effect on him. A four person shows up. Okay. Now I will play Crush Puny Weaklings. It's going to give me, because I played attack, I get three attack plus one attack for each non, each henchman in your victory pile. That's two for now. And now I'm up to six. No discard pile. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go undercover, KO power, extra henchman. Carnival of Wonders will trigger, but I don't care. I could hit the laser right now, but he's going to pass out some wounds. I don't have the winged helm out, so I don't want to do that. Let's start with the shield officer. Whoa kingdom and uh, we'll take out the officer and send this other one undercover the initiates are being handled pretty well in this game no dark memories on them and then we'll take out the bridge builders for the final three KO one of my heroes a shield agent goes away and so do the bridge builders and now i gotta do the carnival wonders effect which is each other player chooses a bias scanner from their victor probably captured by the carnival of wonders and it's going to be ooh, i get the comic shopkeeper let me do that again that's fun it's the only one i've got on the right hand side so there is a comic shopkeeper in the carnival he gave up that winged helm and now he went to the carnival not by choice um i've got wait i didn't play my agent yet did i yeah so let's say i played the agent first before i ko'd it which i would have done um no reveals happened and then three for the one I KO'd, and then four for the other one. I was looking at these and thought I played them, but those two recruit was from Hulkbuster armor. So I'm at four recruit, actually. Um, it's not enough for Hulk get smashed. I don't really want roundhouse sidekick. So I'm going to take a sidekick now on my own, and then later I think I'm going to have five recruit coming up. So Rusty Collar. There's a range that'll help trigger electromagnetic pulse, maybe. And that's all I'll take anyway, so I didn't even need those other ones. Okay, Brains of Brawn, give me some more four, five, six. That's yeah, a lot of recruit. I'm gonna get Hulk get smashed, and that'll help me out later. Gotta do something about these locations, though. Turn 22, another bridge builders. They're gonna go to the bridge, and that's more for the left hand side. The left hand side's got three, by the way. Three henchmen. Um, I've got. No artifacts out, so my total attack this turn is three, which is not a ton. But I can trigger Polaris's effect. I will play Bullets Flying Bob Hiding for two and a half recruit. I turn it sideways to show I got half. It's not going to matter. It's only Bob card I got. Excessive Violence draw card. I don't think I can do an Excessive Violence with three attack. Uh, so just know that it's there. Four and a half recruit, six and a half recruit, and an extra card draw at the end of the turn. Okay, so I'm not going to hit those bridge builders because I'd rather let Hulk get buffed up on the left. So I'm going to leave that alone. So all I'm going to do is recruit. I will take another roundhouse sidekick. I need more attack power and I need to put the HQ. So no excessive violence happening here. I got two and a half recruit left. All right, there's Burst of Rage. That's a really good one. This is what I want on the left. Check it out. Uh, strength, sacrifice, you get plus the attack, you may KO a card from hand or discard power. There we go, there's all the KO power I wanted. I'm not super familiar with Bruce Banner's hero set, but uh, there is some KO power in there. And I got a sidekick for the final two that I've got left. It is a Darwin. All right, I got some, I wish those KO power cards came up earlier, but you know, deal with what you're dealt with. All right, there's all the uh, thrown artifacts on the bottom of the deck. I got uh, three more cards. How great would it be if I got a couple of Weapons Masters now? Two of them is eight attack on their own. That can take care of a uh, graveyard with no villains. Let's see if I get two, or at least one. Five, Lockjaw, Soldier, Soldier. So that's uh, 
If I throw everything, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attack if I decide to play a lock shot. But I might phase him. He's a good boy. He can stick around for a little bit. Turn 23. Really getting in there. All right, finally some shards. So let me show you why they get shards if you're not familiar with these uh, henchmen. So if the bridge is occupied, if there's a villain on the bridge, I'll read the whole thing as verbatim. If there's a villain on the bridge, that villain and this henchman each gain a shard. Otherwise, move this to the bridge. Fight KO one of your heroes. Which does mean I can't hit them this turn. Which is a little annoying. Just a little. Oh, those, that's really hard to see, isn't it? What color should I use? I'm going to use the green. That's a bit easier to see. Especially when I'm zoomed out. Okay, well. Yep. I've only got three attacks, so that ruins my plans for, for hitting the bridge builders. I've got two, four, five, seven. Any wounds to KO? No. So seven total recruit. Which is cool. I can get a couple good pickups. Let's take Hulk get smashed for five. And then that card's falling down. This is a this is how do I get out of here, Bob? That's the uncommon. And I'll take Burst of Rage as well. For one. And all right, look at all that covert. Look at all that Polaris I don't want. That's what happens when you don't let things escape. You have this. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't play a strength, so I only only have his three attack that I can't use for anything because now the British builders are four attack. That was unfortunate timing. But after the reshuffle, I think his teams are going to go great. All right. And also, there's my dimensional blades that are going to just sit out there. And plus, I get two card draws coming up. Speaking of artifacts, I've got some here. Turn 24 is another initiate. And just like that, the city's almost full again. No, not, not the players I want. Not even the players I need. So I'm going to play all three artifacts. One, two, three. Oh, I can do a Lockjaw Daredevil combo to get a, uh, a sidekick. Which is cool. Um, but I might phase... Let, let me see if I want to do that. If I phase Lockjaw for, let's say, one recruit, I'm going to end up with two, three, four... Five, six, seven total attack, which also let me do something. So um, let's uh, let's start by phasing Lockjaw. Wow, he's slow today. And I get bullets flying Bob hiding, which will maybe let me draw Lockjaw again if I excessive violence. Um, two attack, choose a number, then reveal the top card of your deck. If the card is at cost, gain a side. I mean, you know what? I'm going to take a random guess. I'm going to say two. And uh, yep, Lockjaw is two cost, so I gain a sidekick. It's going to be Skids. More wound prevention, but more recruit I don't really need. That's four attack. Bullets flying Bob hiding. Two and a half at, uh, recruit. Excessive violence, draw a card. So if I'm still set on leaving the bridge builders for the left hand side, Living Laser says each player reveals a range hero or gain a wound. Um, so I, I could prevent that with the winged helm, at least one of them. I put Lockjaw away, so that won't work. Left-hand side has no ranged cards. Plus, I got the Gorilla Cult, and I'll have to discard Hydra Halfwit if I do that, too. So, All in all, hitting the Living Laser is not great right now. Uh, discard Pile, because I get, got the sidekick now that buffed up the Officer. Maybe I'll let one henchman go. <laughs> he just does. Like he was erased. The, my deck is uh, pretty pretty substantial so if i throw anything i'm not going to see it for a while so i think what i might want to actually do is just hit the officer send it undercover and save all the artifacts for later prevent some wounds maybe later and get a sidekick if i threw one i could excessive violence and draw lockjaw again let's pretend i did it let's pretend i threw one i'd be at five attack three uh three recruit i hit the officer for excessive violence i'm at no attack I draw a Lockjaw, I can get up to two, and that won't really go anywhere, so. Let's just play this out with what I've got. We will one, get rid of this Initiate. Send the Initiate undercover. I can't forget, by the way, that uh, some of Grim Reaper's tactics are all of I forget if it's some or all of them become locations too, so I gotta really hurry this up. I'm in trouble. I'm not hitting him yet. And uh, let's get a side, or let's recruit a sidekick. You can only recruit one per turn, but you can gain as many as you're allowed to gain. Um, then boom, boom, it's gained. And I'll leave all the artifacts out. All of them are locations. Yeah, that's going to be rough. Let's, let's again ping them off one by one. 
Now, this setup does have extra cards in the villain deck, but it also plays extra cards. So there are two extra... I get basically two extra turns if I factor that in, which is not a lot. Um, turn 25 is M'Baku, and unfortunately, the White Gorilla Cult is in the city. So he is at uh, eight attack this turn, in, or all turns until the Gorilla Cult is gone. Despite the fact that each player reveals their hand and discards a tech card. They are really anti-tech, which is pretty good flavor but bad for me they're anti somebody else's deck okay let's play my artifacts that's one that's two i got two dimensional blades on either side of the game um we'll sidekick and then we'll dual existence because that doesn't matter so i'm showing you the close-up of the sidekick i don't know why let's draw two two grays okay here's the thing about uh my deck it's got one card in it so if I play Dual Existence, yeah. Well, here's the thing about uh, I can set I can set up the draw with Bob, um, which I actually want to do next because if I play Dual Existence, all this gets shuffled, ignores the shuffle, which is actually probably good. All the grays are going to be ignored. So let's uh, let's do this first. Let's play Hydra Halfwit. I'm pretty sure I can actually count. I think the last card of my deck is a gray. So I've got one, two, three. I don't think I've killed that many. Four, five, six, seven, seven uh, grays out here. And in the KO pile, I've KO'd a few. Um, eight, nine, 10, 11. All right, that's 11. That means the 12th one must be the last card in my deck. So I'll play Hydra Halfwit first. And this is gonna be good. Um, one and a half attack, top card of my deck. If it's Shield or Hydra, draw it. Yes, it is. And now, when I do dual existence, these four grays do not get shuffled in anymore, which is which is good. All right, let's play dual existence now, reshuffling the entire discard pile. Everything, well, there was no officers in the city anyway. I haven't played these yet. Move these a little bit over. Big board today. Okay. Look at the top two. Draw one, put the other back. After the shuffle. Shuffle has happened. Top two are... I got Rusty Collins and I got Hulk Get Smashed. Um... If I draw Hulk Get Smashed, that's two attack. But I can't trigger the strength this turn. But if I take it, I'll have a total of one, two, three, five attack. But if I take Rusty Collins, that's four. That's enough to hit a bridge builder. So I'm going to put Hulk Get Smashed on top, and hopefully I can get that trigger. And I'll draw Rusty Collins. Let's play Rusty Collins. Um, the top card is not going to be a zero cost. Maybe the one under it will be. So two total, two and a half total attack. So we've got uh, Hulk get smashed and Grant Ward. Hmm. So I can't KO any of them, but I think I might want to tuck Grant Ward. He's tech, but I have other tech cards in here that have attack on them. So I'm going to tuck Ward. I'm going to put Hulk get smashed back on top. Rusty goes away. That's going to leave me with just enough attack to hit a Bridge Builders. That's four and a half. Um, I could throw the Blades for more, but I don't need to right now. And Carnival of Wonders, I'd rather have the bridge clear for a cheaper defeat on a bridge builder's coming in. Um, right hand side has no bystanders left, if I recall correctly, so this is going to whiff on that. So I can just uh, hit the one on the bridge for four. So. And get a shard. Let's do that. This is my shard. I just pick a, pick a shard for me, put him on the artifact, and K one of my heroes, which means, again, I'll play the agents before I do that. And then KO one of them. And that's it. If I wanted to throw both blades in my shard, I can get three more attack, but that's not going to be enough. I'm going to save them for a really good turn after this. Right hand side. Oof. Oh, yeah, I didn't play both of them. Let's get a sidekick. Where did my recruit go? Oh, that's a good one. I just I just whiffed that uh, off, that agent away and forgot they existed. All right, so this is my discard pile, which is pretty good. Um, not for the officers coming in, but because uh, of the classes. But my next hand should be really good. Check this out. Here we go. One, two. Or maybe I spoke too soon. Three, four, five, six. All right, I didn't speak too soon. I can trigger like everything. Um, actually, I have to pick one thing not to trigger. Probably the sacrifice. But we'll see. That's a good hand. Plus, I got the two blades out and a shard. I got three uh, three artifacts on the right-hand side, too. Turn 26 is Lasher coming in. 
the lasher is going to bond with one of my henchmen and once again this keeps happening on the side that has no henchmen in my victory pile because i put them on the left hand side we haven't seen too many bridge builders anyway so i'm gonna have a, a run of bridge builders coming in to give me a little bit of a break because i can just piercing energy them away no matter how many shards they've got so this one stays at it to attack the uh, life foundation not doing too great um, let's start with the Weapons Master for four attack, because I control not one, but three artifacts. I've got a, uh, a soldier. Another soldier. Six. So, depending on what I do, if I played everything out, that'll be eight, nine, ten, eleven, if I threw everything. I have to get those Lethal Legion out of there. I want to get Living Laser out of there before, um, the maze comes in. I forget how much attack it has, but it would at least be stronger than the Carnival, I believe. I don't really have a great reason to phase Lockjaw. So I think I should just play him for attack. That would give me enough to hit M'Baku. Each player reveals their hand and discards a tech card. That's also not great. Because I want to keep the tech cards I've got. Actually, Hulkbuster armor is not going to be that useful. Chaos of Wound gives me a recruit. Although I do need it for Brains and Brawn. But I don't want to get rid of it. Uh, laser is each player reveals a range hero or gains a wound. So what I could do is with Lockjaw, I could hit Living Laser right now. Both sides can reveal a range to avoid the wound, or I could use the Winged Helm to draw two cards instead. Regardless, I'm going to do that. So let's spend the six attack right now at this point. For four, five, six, we'll hit Living Laser. And uh, there's no maze location right now, so he's just gone for six. So... Um, to reveal or not to reveal. So I got the Winged Helm here. I can throw this to prevent the wound and draw two cards. I think drawing two cards would be pretty good over here right now, actually. So I think what I'm going to do is prevent the wound on the left-hand side by showing Polaris. Right-hand side, I'm going to not show Lockjaw. I'm going to take the wound, take it, and then I'm going to throw this to prevent it and draw two cards. And those two cards are... One, two. Well, at least I got them out of the way. So that's good in, in its own way. I'll play them. Plus, I can recruit. One, two, three. Recruit. No covert played. Actually, I should... Three recruit. I can get more recruit if I decide to throw the blades. But since I'm not going to fight anything else this turn... I could fight Lasher, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a chance. I'm going to phase Lockjaw. I just got two greys off the top. So um, let's phase Lockjaw. I could get Bob, too. We'll see what I get here when I phase Lockjaw. All right. Okay, good. So now I can get Bob without having to uh, throw my Dimensional Blades. So let's play uh, Polaris, and now I can get Bob. I was wondering if I could draw it with Locked or phase out for a Recruit, so I wouldn't have to throw my Blades. But yeah, how do I get here? It's pretty good. Four attack, Covert. Look at the top card of another player's deck. Ask them a yes or no question about it, which is going to be your job. If they guess right, they draw that card. If not, you then you draw a card. But yes, I'm taking this, and I don't have to throw a thing. There's dual existence again. Or anything else. I already threw the helm. Alright, double weapons master. So this is a good turn. Look at this. So this is four, eight, and then with the cost thing, it's going to be um, zero, two, five, six. Yeah, that's 12, 14. I can get 16 attack on the next turn. So we'll see what happens. This is also going to be a good turn. Turn 27 gives me another bridge builders because i cleared the bridge they're going to stay right where they are okay um any card draws this turn no so let's do what i can i'm going to start with polaris just for the two piercing energy oh they go to the bridge they just don't get a shard whatever i'm taking them out anyway thank you for that catch two piercing energy which means i can go ping ping and I'll do that right now. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I only have uh, one card I want to KO. So we'll see if I somehow get another one. Do I have any wounds for Hulkbuster armor? I don't. But I'm going to play it anyway for two recruit. <clears throat> I'll play the trooper. For uh, one attack at three different values here. Um, so what's which of these two do I want to trigger? Do I want... You may gain a wound. Oh, actually... I should back up. I should do this, then I should do Hulkbuster armor. So let me back up a second. I didn't get the order right. So I'll back up. I just played the Pulse, and I played the Trooper. All right. 
So Hulk gets smashed, there's two attack, you may gain a wound if you do KO up two other cards from your hand and or discard pile, you can do a discard pile KO, which is going to be really good. But to do that, I'm going to have to play a Hulkbuster armor after it, and I'm going to have to play a strength before it. Okay, and, and then I won't sacrifice Burst of Rage yet, so that's going to work. So we're going to start with Burst of Rage for one attack in addition. I will not triggering the strength because I didn't play a strength. Now we'll go with Hulk Get Smashed. Um, two more attack. You may gain a wound if you do. Uh, so I will gain the wound. It's a Grievous one. I'm going to get rid of it in a second. You may KO up to two other cards from your hand in our discard pile. Um, my discard pile's got a couple cards I want to KO. Other cards. So you can't KO the wound with this. But I'll get rid of this Agent and Trooper from my discard pile. Down to very few great cards left. Yep, so I'm at four attack. Now I can play Brains and Brawn because I've played... No, I didn't play the tech yet. I gotta do this in this order. Turn order matters, everyone. Uh, two recruit. Um, I can KO that wound. One force trauma for my discard pile. I just got two more recruit. Bruce Banner's Infinity Saga set is very fun. One of my favorites. And now I can play Brains and Brawn because I've played both classes. So I get a total of four more attack. I'm up to eight attack. I have artifacts and a shard left. But yeah, I don't want to hit both bridge builders because then I will have to KO something besides my trooper. Unless I want to get rid of Hulkbuster armor, which I'm open to doing, but I need it to combo with Hulk Get Smash now. But I have a couple of them. But I should save it. So I can hit this graveyard and get a Strength Sunspot, which is going to be good. Let's say I do that for eight. Um, then I can Piercing Energy a Bridge Builders, and I can throw Blades to hit Lasher as well. So let's let's start by hitting a location. Let's hit uh, this Graveyard. Finally hit a Graveyard, because there's no villain there for eight attack, and we're going to uh, gain Sunspot, two attack, and then Strength to get plus one attack. Great for this side. Um, we will piercing energy the bridge builders with the shard, so I get the shard. And uh, KO one of my heroes is going to be this shield trooper. Any day now. Didn't play. <laughs> there we go. And then we get rid of the bridge builders. Boy, do I need to upgrade. And then. Um, I've got two shards, and I've got two dimensional blades. I'm going to keep my shards. I'm going to throw the blades to get two more attack and two more recruit, which is going to let me hit Lasher for two. A little more clearing up of the city. I don't want to hit the bridge builders because I don't... Uh, that's four henchmen. Unless I want to KO Hulkbuster armor, but I don't want to yet. As far as recruiting, boy, I can get dual existence again. won't really hurt me. Um, it's basically a draw card. So I'm going to do that. I will take the other one for two. Um, yes. Ooh, and there's there it is. Epic Middle Manager. It is the rare, Bob Rare. Five attack, excessive violence, KO up to two. Hydra and or shield heroes from your discard pile. Draw a card for each hero KO'd this way. That's a good one. But I've already... Better for the right-hand side because of the covert and how many graves the right side has left. So It's, it's doable. I'm going to not take anything else from the HQ. I'm going to take a uh, sidekick, not an officer. That would be silly. Um, it's Layla Miller, a tech one, investigating for a team. That's cool. Um, and I will end my turn there. I got rid of one graveyard and a lot of other stuff, so I'm happy about that. And I got two shards sitting around. Four, five, six. And Crush Beanie Weakness. I got four henchmen defeated. This is going to be a seven attack card when I play it after Hulkbuster Armor, plus more piercing energy and more... Bridge Builders to ping. Plus more attack power over here on the right side. Turn 28 is an officer. It's all about, I'm racing against the villain deck now. I have I have power, but do I have the time? Because let's uh, let's start putting attack on Grim Reaper, by the way. So he gets plus two for each location. So he's at 9, uh, 13, no, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17. So he's at 17 attack right now for the four locations. That's a lot. So I'm going to try to get these locations out of here. So both Weapons Masters are going to give me four attack each. Move these shards over. So I'm up to eight already with two cards. Gotta love that because I got two artifacts out. We're going to use... We're going to hold off on Darwin. I could play him after... I could... I'm going to reorder this maybe. Before I reveal anything. We'll just see. Two Recruit. 
Then if I play the Iron Fist side, once again, I've got six, five, zero, two, four costs. I'm put into 12. And then playing Darwin right now, because I have attack symbol, so it'd be 14 attack. And then if I did decide to throw the blades, I'd be at 16 attack. I think that's what I want to do. Um, now, could I get Bob's Rare this turn? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could get Bob's Rare Epic Middle Manager this turn as well if I played things a bit differently. So before I commit to this, let me just see what I could hit for 14. Again, that's 4, 8. Uh, yep. 12, 14. I could get 16. So I can go... I could, If I did get 16, I could hit both Graveyards, which is pretty good for hitting the Mastermind soon. They have no villains there. I would have to get Magma, but she's draw a card. Not going to hurt me. But that would turn him down. There's only... There's two more Master Strikes coming up. So I'm really tempted to just take out two graveyards right now while I can. If I did decide to take Bob, how much attack would that leave me with? That would be eight. I would get 11, and I could put them on top of my deck. 13. No, I don't only need eight. Yeah. How much attack? Four, eight. Eight attack. Okay. So what I could do is I could hit one graveyard and recruit Bob's rare to the top of my deck. That sounds very tempting, instead of hitting two graveyards, because Epic Middle Manager will help me KO some of the other cards with the time that I have got left. So I'm going to do, or I can hit M'Baku, <laughs> but I think I'm going to try to go for that rare. Let's back all the way up to the beginning of my turn. I will still play Weapons Masters, uh, eight attack. Now we're going to recruit Bob. So I've got two operatives, one, two, hidden identity. Uh, there we go. Next year I recruit this turn goes on top of my deck, so I'm up to five recruit. And I gotta play Darwin for two more recruit, up to seven, and I will throw one dimensional blade. Nine attack and eight recruit. So now I get to recruit Bob uh, Epic Middle Manager to the top of my deck for eight. Okay. Replaced another pulse. How much uh three pulses on the left could hit Epic Grim Reaper, no matter how much attack he's got. And, uh, okay, so now the question is, do I hit M'Baku or a, or a Graveyard? M'Baku's fight effect is each player reveals their hand and discards a tech card. Left-hand side does have tech I don't want to get rid of, so I don't want to fight M'Baku this turn. So we are going to fight. I'll, I'll leave Magma alone so just in case left side can get that. I'm going to turn this down to one. I'm going to hit the one above the streets right now. Okay, that's the second Graveyard gone. Uh, for now, Epic and Reaper's at 15. And I will leave the blade out. Darwin's gone. And that's it. And guess what? I get the rare in my hand now. Yes, definitely. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I have plenty of shield in my discard pile, so this is going to be pretty good. Epic Mill Manager when it comes up. I'm happy I got that. That's a fun, that's a fun rare. I don't ever get to use it. A hey, question. Does anybody ever... So I like how rares are rares, and I've played so many games of Legendary Hundreds, and I've some rares I've rarely or never even recruited or used. Does anybody out there like to use the rares so much that they just... They house rule it so they can start or get rares easier? I wouldn't do it. I'm just curious. I think some people might do that. Um, so they can use them. Turn 29 is another Bridge Builders, and these ones are going to stay where they are and pass out some shards, which won't matter with the Piercing Energy. I mean, I, I could see it. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like using cheats in a game, which some people like to do on a, a, a not multiplayer game. And uh, one second, gotta stay hydrated. Okay, let's start with Polaris. Speaking of Polaris, we're gonna play her again. Yeah, really, you ignore them even when you can get them. Um, yeah, when I used four or five players, I gave everybody two extra turns seems more fun though at the, at the beginning of the game that's the one, one major house rule i use which i rarely do here because I'm, I'm only one person playing two hands two piercing energy um and i got two cards i want to ko so check this out um i will have to take care of the carnival but i'm going to play one two shield agents um let's go one piercing energy get a shard on the left take out these bridge builders and do another ko the shield agent's gone <laughs> 
okay, yeah, S same thing. It's it's more fun when I, you know, when they're rare, when you rarely get to use them. And okay, so I did the carnival, the carnival effect. That is uh, each other player, right hand side, chooses a bystander from the victory pile to be captured by the carnival. Do I have any left? I don't. So that whips again. Carnival stays. And we'll pierce the other bridge builders. Got another shard. That's four shards. It's really hard to tell how many shards I've got. So I'm going to put a die down there and KO another one of my heroes. By the way, that increases. I think I have six henchmen now. i got to double check. But I'll KO another shield agent. Let me just confirm. So left hand side has got one, two, three, four, five. Six bridge built, seven bridge built. I missed one. I got seven. I had a feeling I missed one, but that's great because check this out. Crush Peeny Wicklings is really going to work right now. Um, we'll start with the Hulkbuster armor to recruit. Do I have any wounds? I don't think I have any over here. Nope. But once I play Crush Peeny Wicklings, I get three attack base plus seven more for the seven henchmen and victory pile. So that's 10 attack from a single card. <laughs> you have to love that. Officer, two more recruit. All right. Plus, I got four shards. Let me actually get a shard counter for you because it's it's hard to see how many shards I've got. I wish I had something more colorful. I guess I can use the blue one. So I've got four shards here. That'll just let you know how many I've got. So 10 attack, huh? Um, this is at 11. This graveyard because there's a villain there. Baku is 8. Each player builds a hand and discards a tech card. Won't hurt me over here on the left because I've already played my hand. and won't hurt me on the right. So, yeah, fighting a Baku might be the way I want to go here. For 8. He's always going to be 8 until I take out the Gorilla Cult. I could hit the Gorilla Cult first for 6, and then I could get rid of him for 5, but I'm still... I have shards, though. Not against spending my shards, but what I really got to do is get rid of these locations because that's what's buffing up the Mastermind. So, maybe what I do is hit the Gorilla Cult and the Carnival. Okay, the Gorilla Cult, when you fight it, is each uh, other player reveals their hand and discards a tech card. So that wouldn't hurt me now. Right-hand side has no tech. But I think what I want to do is weaken the Mastermind by hitting the Gorilla Cult and the Carnival, which will weaken M'Baku for later. I'll have to spend one shard to do it, but it's totally worth it. And then Grim Reaper will only be plus two. I have to start hitting him, and he's going to put more locations in. So let's let's do that. Let's start by hitting the hitting the cult for six, and it just becomes VP for me. I will spend a single shard of my four. I'll turn this down to three, just so you can see how many shards I've got. Five attack, and we'll hit the carnival. I could hit. I could spend more shards and hit the other location, but I'll hold. Actually, let me think about that. If I spend three more shards, actually, no, this is at eleven right now. Not worth it. I can't even do it. Um, Carnival of Wonders. Again, hit this for five. And I got the Comic Shopkeeper. Let's see if we're getting something good. Top three cards of the Hero Deck. One, two, three. Pretty good for sacrifice cards, by the way. Um, ooh, there's Bruce Fender's Averse to Snap Rare. That's going on top. Hmm, okay. A player of my choice has to gain Hydra Halfwit. So Hydra Halfwit, tech is great for the left, but I don't have a lot of tech anymore. I'm sorry, a lot of uh, shield anymore. But it's better than the right-hand side having it. So I'm going to take... Oh, actually, the right-hand side has more shield, though. I'm going to have the right-hand side, right side gain this. More likely to hit now. Okay, and um, I'm going to put Reverse the Snap on top of the deck, followed by Bob. Check out what Reverse the Snap does. It's such a good card. Okay, five attack. By the way, I have... um two variants of this one. Let me know which one you like better. Um, this is uh, variant A. This is variant B. This is uh, some really cool custom art done online. Um, I'll have to post the source. But uh, this one is more fitting for the theme, but this one matches the other cards better. So whatever one you guys like the most, I'll use um, on the top. As five attack and then tech sacrifice, get up to one other hero from the KO pile. Then combine your deck and discard pile. Put all those cards that cost zero into your discard pile. Shuffle the rest into a new deck. It's cool, um, but it's going on top of the top of the hero deck. I got six recruit. Let's go ahead and take another pulse and put that rare right in the city, right or in the city in the HQ right now. There it is. It's beautiful. Oh, the right hand side doesn't have enough recruit to get bombs, so I won't worry. And we'll end with a sidekick. It is a standard. 
that is the turn. No opinions on that uh, Bruce Banner rare? Which one do you prefer? It was my idea um, to use the other one, but um, I think this one's grown on me. Fits the set really well. Okay, five, six. All right, we'll see what that does for me. Moving over. We are about two hours into the stream, so thank you for sticking around on this randomizer stream. This is a fun one. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one this week. Happy to have fun ones, not impossible ones. Although, speaking of impossible, before I pull the card from the villain deck, um, Grim Reaper's at 11 attack right now. The villain deck is very, getting very thin. Um, we've got other officer. All right. got to remember, there's two more twists coming. Yeah, that's what I, I think so. I'm going to consider that other one an unofficial promo, an alt art promo, because this one fits the set better. None of them are actually promos. Um, okay, so um, let's calculate... Yes, thank you. That's why I hit the cult. But these officers, these uh, initiates are, I've got tech, instinct, strength, covert, everything but, oh, I have ranged, all five classes. So dark memories wise, they're fully buffed. So they're at eight. Um, eight and eight. You mean, you mean sacrifice? I mean, sacrifice is not intended to work with them. It's fun when it does, but um, it's just big numbers for one-offs. It's a decision. I have not yet played with sacrifice with either of the phoenixes. Would be interesting. Um, but normally, they don't have anything to do with them. Okay. That's rough. Let me go ahead and play what I've got. Let's start with uh, Epic Middle Manager. No, I didn't play a Carbon... I did play a Carbon Villain deck. It was an officer, right? Yep, I totally did. I'm losing track of my mind here. I gotta end this stream soon. I'm gonna fall apart. Okay. Um, five attack. Excessive violence. KO up to two shield and or hydra, hydra and or shield heroes. Let me discard pile. Draw a card for each hero KO'd this way. So I do have them, but I'm gonna have to... Um, yeah, still only one non-Maria in the villain deck. Or at all, actually. Um... We'll see what happens on the last two twists and whatever is left in the villain deck. So this is for excessive violence. I'm going to keep it in mind, but I definitely have the cards to KO and draw a card. So the easiest way to do that is to hit M'Baku for six. But that's going to, again, make the left-hand side discard a tech card, which I could discard Grant Ward. It's not going to hurt me that much. So I don't really mind. Let's play the Winged Helm. Let's phase Lockjaw do the roundhouse sidekick thing. Um, but yeah, let's phase him. Oh, he's over here. Poof. There he is. There he's gone. He's gone. All right. Phasing out for another dimensional blade on the bottom of the deck, of course. So that's going there. Let's roundhouse sidekick. It's going to be two. It's lockjaw. We know that. So two. Yep. There he is. Only card left in my deck. And um, no, I meant M'Baku. I don't think I said the graveyard, did I? Oh, you... No, he's not. He's just hiding. So I could excessive violence one of the officers, too, if I really felt like it. Um, I'll just draw the blades next. If I throw the blade, uh, throw all my artifacts, I have 10 total attack. So I can't hit two things. I'm a, so here's the thing about here's the thing about Lockjaw, by the way. Yeah, he's, he's being glitchy today. If I decide to excessive violence and KO heroes, um, I only have one card in my deck. So that means... Well, actually, three of my cards are artifacts, so I don't really mind if... Well, Bob won't end up in my reshuffle. That's the that's the sad part. Yeah, so if I throw one... I, I was getting to that. You're right. If I throw the one, I can avoid it, and then Bob will end up in my reshuffle. So I can still do the KOs. Yeah, I don't really see a reason not to do that. I'm just being careful. Um... I'm going to throw one of the dimensional blades to the bottom. Give me eight attack and then one recruit. Less excessive violence in Baku. Actually, should I go for an officer's officer so I don't have to? Left side might be able to get reverse the snap if I'm lucky. Yeah, because I've got uh, two recruit. I don't know what else I would get. Maybe I excessive violence uh, shield officer. 
Although, I don't want to reshuffle because then I'm going to lose uh, the rare for a while. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to throw the other dimensional blade for another attack, another recruit. I can get a sidekick anyway. We're going to go ahead and excessive violence the initiative. Initiative? Initiative? Initiate? Wow. Okay. And it's the initiate in the sewers for nine total attack. And uh, we're going to fight him and then send him undercover. And that is going to trigger Epic Middle Manager's excessive violence effect. KO up the two shield and our Hydra heroes from your discard. I've saved those backwards every time. Because this, this side is the Hydra side. That's why. All right. Two operatives are going to get KO'd. And I draw two cards. One, two. All right, I'll put the Dimensional Blade back into play. I could phase the other blade. So I I think it's, is it a blade? I think so, it's at the bottom of my deck, it's gotta be. Um, I will, just so it can be out there, I'll play that. And I won't even bother playing anything else. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, actually, no, I don't want Polaris. I'm gonna get another sidekick. And it's another Lockjaw. Ooh, he's so tired, he's shown up twice. Okay, and that's the turn. Now, there's Lockjaw and a reshuffle. I got all three artifacts out. Right hand side is still full of junk, so I'm hoping this hand is good. Left hand side is getting real, real streamlined. But there's gotta be more henchmen in there. Although seven, there are seven so far. Many, many treats. I wonder what Lockjaw's favorite treat is. It's probably got to be a canonical treat that he loves. <laughs> okay, that's one, two. Okay, three, four, five, six. Got the bomb trigger. That'll be fun. I'll need your guys' help with that. Okay, turn 31 is another twist. Messing me up. Let's see if it's a special officer this time. It's going to be a standard Maria. And then another villain card played. It's going to be there's the laser maze laser maze comes in goes over the sewers whenever you fight a villain here each other player reveals a range hero or gains a wound by the way no discard pile good place to be there um let's play well hold on before i play polaris let's go dimensional blade dimensional blade played i think maybe this turn i want to send grant ward undercover um and I can KO the Shield Trooper along with him. Now, if I want a chance to recruit reverse the snap, I need seven recruit. That's two, that's four. <laughs> I'm, I'll be there. What team do I investigate for? I've got Avengers for Bruce. Probably my best bet. I've got X-Men for Polaris if I'd like to get that second pair of piercing energy I could say I think those are the two big ones it's a much higher chance that I land in uh, I, I find an Avengers card but I'd really like to get another Polaris but if I want to do the safe thing I'm gonna say Avengers so let's commit to that one attack top two cards in my deck okay it's Bob and it's Maria Hill would have failed either way so they're going they're gonna get punished by getting tucked to the bottom of the deck so close. I'll play my two piercing. It's not going to do anything for me this time. I'll play Grant Ward for two recruit. Nope. I'm only at two. I haven't thrown anything yet. And um, I'll play the... Uh, yeah, two attacks not going to do anything. So let's go ahead and... Uh, although, actually, two attack will do something. If I throw one blade, I can hit an officer. Yeah, so I guess I'm not... Actually, I'll play the trooper first. Oh, no. Nah, I'll, I'll leave everybody where they are. I'll, I won't set them undercover. I'll play the trooper for a second attack. Although I do have shards. I should take advantage of the fact there are no cards in my discard pile. So instead of throwing a blade, I'm going to spend a shard instead. I said instead twice. That was unnecessary. Three attack, we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, this officer. 
<clears throat> Send her undercover for three. Oh my gosh, shield is falling apart too. But you know, they always do that. Two shards left, but you can kind of see. Two piercing energy doesn't do anything. Yes. Sorry, each I reveal Lockjaw. I did that in my head off screen. Here. Laser Maze. When you fight a villain here, each other player reveals a range hero or gains a wound. He was on top of the deck. I wasn't even thinking about it, but yes. I could, uh, I could if I wanted to, use the Winged Helm to draw two cards instead. You know what? That sounds fun. I think I will throw the Winged Helm to draw two more cards on top of these. Yeah, throw in the Helm. Drawing two on the right-hand side. One, two. Well, again, we're not in my next hand. That happened twice. Um, I will end by getting a sidekick and calling it a turn. By the way, Grim Reaper is buffed up now. He's at 13. I am running desperately. I desperately have to finish this if I'm running out of time. Oh, this, this hand, though. Wow, okay. I need another one of those Count All the Henchmen Bruce Banner cards. Turn 32 is another officer. I I don't have a lot of cards left. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I haven't hit Green Reaper once. This is not going well. I feel like it is on the surface, but uh, it's not really going that well. So I can do a time bomb thing. I can do a lot of crazy things here. Um, yeah, much yikes. Let's start with Hydra Halfwit just in case. And then we can do a reveal and then we can do the sidekick without doing anything else. Um, yeah, more locations coming out. One and a half attack, top part of my deck is not shield or hydra, so that's fine. Um, I looked at it, by the way. It's a five cost weapons master, so I'm gonna go ahead and play Roundhouse Sidekick. Roundhouse Sidekick is gonna be two more attack. <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna be really hard to get there. And uh, I get a sidekick because I said five, right? Because I know what that is. It is Ms. Lion. We'll see how far I can get there. Uh, let's... How do I get out of here? Up to seven attack. Look at the top card on the player's deck. Ask me yes or no question about it. If they guess right, then I draw that card. So what I'm going to do is, if not, then you draw a card. So I'm going to show you the top card of the left-hand side's deck, and I'm not going to look at it. And then I'll ask you a yes or no question about it, and then chat will tell me. And you can all answer different things if you want. It'll be very confusing for me. Ask me a yes or no question about it. Okay. How vague do I want to be? Okay, here we go. Is this a gray card? This one right here. I'm not looking at it. Is it a gray card? You tell me. It's out of my hands. I'm guessing, I'm guessing most people are helping me here. So I'm going to believe that it is not a gray card. So I'm going to say the left-hand side draws a card. Although, I could guess wrong on purpose. Or they guess right. Wait, hold on. Oh, I did this backwards. Did, no, no, this is the way I usually do it. So I'm playing as the right-hand side. Wait, did I do this backwards? I forget how I usually do this. So I'm pretending... Oh, this, is, this is so confusing for me at the end of the day. Um, I am pretending that this is... I'm the left-hand side's player. And the right-hand side asked me, but that's you. Oh, I think I was supposed to ask you without showing it. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to show you. Oh well. I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw this one out the window. So let's just say that I get to do what I want with it. Um, yeah, it's not great. What I should have done, well, I totally messed that up. What I should have done is I looked at it. I asked you a yes or no question. That's what I should have done. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely messed that up. Whatever. So I'm gonna say left side draws it, and we'll just uh, pretend that never happened. Okay, <laughs> I'm just soldier. What is the card I'm thinking of that? It's one of the bias scanners or something. Okay, nine attack. I could do a meltdown. And I could just hit everything. 
I can hit the Mastermind this turn. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you want to throw extra cards in the Villain deck, be my guest. So I could hit the Mastermind here if I Boomer and play Lockjaw, or I could throw the Blades to do it. I shouldn't waste any time. I should hit Epic Grim Reaper, but he's just going to make himself stronger. So let's get that 13. Um, yes. Thank you, Astigmatic. I, I mixed those two up, so I did that all wrong. Um, let's, um, let's Boomer Boom Boom. That is a weird thing to say. Up to 12 attack. And a half. And I'm going to phase Lockjaw. Here we go. All right, cool. Weapons Master. I'm up to 16 attack now, actually. After I play Weapons Master. Father of Lies from Loki. Thank you. Loki, he came in and he messed up my game when he wasn't present. I have one card in my discard pile, so even if I hit Grim Reaper, I can still hit an officer if I uh, throw one of these blades after this. Or, I could clear both locations right now instead. If I throw both blades, I'll be at 18 attack. This is at 11. And I could hit, clear the maze for 18 total. So what do you guys think? Should I hit Grim Reaper right now? Or should I clear both locations and reduce him down to 9 before he buffs up again? But after I hit him now, he's going to be buffed by 3 locations. Left-hand side's got the triggered Crush Puny Weaklings for a lot of attack coming up. If I clear locations, that'll make him easier to hit for the con for the consecutive turns. But he's just going to make more locations when I hit him. I think I clear the location. I don't have a lot of time left. <clears throat> but if I clear the locations now, he's going to be easier to hit. Oh, it... Mm, mm, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I'm sorry about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hit the locations. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do, but I think it is because it's going to make him weaker and easier to hit over consecutive turns. Yeah, Loki's dog. <laughs> in real estate and in this legendary setup. Let's clear locations. Because they do directly affect how I can hit him. So, spending 8, actually 11, down to 5. Because he's a villain there. We'll take out the location. And we'll gain magma, which I can't really pick right now. And then let's throw. Oh, if it if it didn't then it, if it didn't sub then re refresh it might pop up. I don't know. It'll happen anyway. But again, thank you again for the sub. I appreciate it. I'll throw both blades up to seven attack and two recruit. We're gonna hit. No, all caps is great. Keep the all caps coming. All right, let's get rid of let's get rid of the uh, location, and uh, now he's down to base nine. I got three recruit, and I'm going to get a sidekick. And we'll see. oh, there's almost said lockjaw. It's rock slide. It's a different character. I'm losing my mind. You guys are here for it, and uh, you're welcome. We get a lockjaw. Ooh, double lockjaw. I can phase them back and forth forever, and never have to never have to end the game. All right, moving over. I'm in a good place now for hitting the Mastermind with this hand, and now that he's at nine, Rock Chomp. Well, I mean, technically, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I did that, because now he's going to get buffed up a little more. But no wounds go out. He, uh, he's just going to go up to uh, 11. There's a graveyard there now. So let's do some damage. <clears throat> let's start with... Let's do a dual existence first. No, let's do a... <clears throat> it's not going to matter. Let's do a sidekick first. Yeah, sidekick first. Draw two. Here we go. One, two. Oh, even better. Oh, this is going to be a really good hand, everyone. Um, okay. Yeah, I got rid of those locations. I would have I uh, had one if I didn't take those locations out. Dual existence. Top two cards in my deck. Draw one to the other back. I'm going to draw Prodigy, put Polaris back, and then draw her in a second. And I can copy. I can I can, uh, I can can copy Burst of Rage if I want. Or Hulk gets smashed. All right. The second dual existence. Top two cards in my deck. This is going to be a really good hand. I draw Polaris to get Polaris back. No, no choice there. Okay. I got a lot here. Um, 
one of these strengths I can't trigger. Uh, probably Hulk gets smashed. I want to... I think I want to sacrifice Burst of Rage. I just need as much attack as I can get. So... I only have one card I want to KO in the discard pile anyway. So let's play Hulk get smashed first. For two attack. I'm going to make some room here. Because I'm going to have a big turn. Avatar is right. I could use that to hit Grim Reaper for six piercing energy. I did throw all my artifacts. I didn't discard them by accident. But good checking. I did actually throw them all. So before I decide on Prodigy, I'm going to play everything else out first. But I could definitely do that. Um... Let's keep going. I'm going to play Sunspot. No, good checking. I do that sometimes. You know that. All right. Up to five attack after Sunspot. Let's go with uh, Burst of Rage. I don't know if I want to sacrifice this yet. But in this, for the sake of getting as much attack as I can before the game ends, I think I do want to sacrifice it. So I'm going to play this for one attack. I'll act have to activate Sacrifice. If I didn't want to, I had to play this before. Oh, wait. Is Sacrifice a May effect? Is it in the keyword? I think it is in the keyword. It's a May effect. I'm doing it anyway. I'm up to 9 attack. You may KO a card from hand or discard pile. I'm going to go ahead and KO this uh, trooper. Yes, man. That's what I thought. So not what month it is, Kyla. Can I... Just kidding. All right. There we go. And uh, you're. I think you're right. Um, and I'll get rid of Burst of Rage. Yep, it's you may. It's right there. Thank you, Nightbot. Thank you, Dre. Thank you, Kyla. Uh, perfect. Cool. Um, Hulkbuster Armors. I'm going to play now for two recruit. No wounds to KO from my hand or discard pile, but now I will play Crush Puny Weaklings. Oh my gosh, though. I want to play... I guess what's better, doing the Polaris thing or copying Crush Puny Weaklings? Probably Polaris, because that's a free hit on the Mastermind. But this is still pretty good. So I'm going to play Crush Puny Weaklings up to 12. Plus, I should have 7 Henchmen defeated. Let me just double, double check and see if that's still 7. Um, I think it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Polaris is better, just by a bit. Uh, 7. 19 attack on the die. That's a great place to be. Brains and Brawn is going to trigger, which is going to give me 4 total attack. But 23, get the second die out here. But I should use Polaris second after he gets buffed up by his own location. So let's do the Polaris combo right now. So... Wait a second. Do I... Wait a second. Do I know... Yeah, oh yeah the copy is going to give me two more piercing energy. That's right. That's why. All right. So we're going to play Electromagnetic Pulse. Two piercing. We'll play Prodigy as a copy of the pulse. Two more piercing. And I get to draw a card. And there's that pulse. Prodigy goes away. And that's my sixth piercing. And I draw another card. And it's going to be a trooper. I'm at 24 attack, six piercing energy, and two recruit. So, is there any reason I should hit this location for 11 first? I don't think so. I think it's going to cost 11 to hit the Grim Reaper. We're going to go ahead, go ahead and hit him for 11 right now. At 13. right now. All right, yep, I'm at 13. Let's hit him for 11 attack. Top card of the tactics is Carnival of Concussions. That's awful. Fight. If this is not already a location, draw three cards, and this card enters a city as a location with this ability. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player KOs a bystander from their victory pile. I have only three cards left in my deck. So this goes into the city. Going to be 13 now, and Dre with the classic gifted sub for hitting the mastermind. Thank you so much, Dre, for that community sub. Always makes it feel better, even enhancing hitting the mastermind when you do that. So thank you so much, even though Grim Reaper is buffed up. So I can hit him again, and I can piercing energy from for a third time. But first, um, let me draw the cards. Draw three cards. Let me um, push everybody over a little bit. Here they are. One, two. Three. Okay, um, I have discard pile cards. Yeah, just two and a half hours. No big deal. Um, let's play Hydra. Half wit. 14 and a half attack. Reshuffle my discard pile, which is not that many cards. Hold on. Can I recruit the rare? Not yet. 
I'm al almost can. <laughs> and then I'll draw it pretty soon. Okay. Although I have the dimensional blades, I could throw those and recruit before I reshuffle. Hold on. Yeah, before I do this, the backup, I'm at 13 attack. I'll play Hulkbuster Armor 4 recruit. Shield Officer 6 recruit. We're going to throw one dimensional blade for 14 total attack and 7 total recruit. And we're going to recruit, reverse the snap. That was cool. There's Bob. Speaking of Bob. Now let's go ahead and play Hydra Halfwit. Um, now I'm at 15 and a half attack. Top card of my deck is the Dimensional Blade, so I don't draw it. If I do get to draw one more card, I can get that. Or two more cards, actually. But that's not going to happen. All right, let's um, let's just go ahead and hit Grim Reaper for a 13 right now. I'm going to draw more cards right now, I think. Do all his locations get any card draw? I don't recall. But I'm down to two and a half attack. All right, this is going to be a good, good one. No, I don't get to draw any more cards. Shoot. Up to 15 attack in a second. Okay, if this is not already a location, KO up to two cards from your discard pile. And this card enters the city as a location with this ability. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player reveals their hand and discards a non-gray card. Um, I'm actually going to... Should I KO? I'm gonna, I think I'm going to KO Grant Ward. I don't really need him anymore. I have reversed the snaps, the sidekick, and Polaris. I'm going to keep them there. Um, and this goes into the city. Now, 17 attack for our friend here. I do have a piercing energy that I gotta use. So let's hit him a third time for six piercing energy. Got another one of his locations out there. Maze of Bones. All right, well, at least this gets the, the rare into the top of the deck. Okay, <clears throat> fight. If this is not already a location, look at the top four cards of your deck. Here we go, that's Sif, and then the other three that are in my discard pile. 15 attack. Oh yeah, he's gonna be at 17 now. I think I was thinking ahead of, but make it a really good turn. Three hits on the Mastermind. Um, again, if this is not a location already, look at the top four cards of your deck, KO any number of them, and put the rest back in any order, then this card enters as a location. Yes, yes, yes. 17 now. Thank you. Um, I'm going to keep every all the cards here. I'm going to keep all four of them. But um, they're go, they go to my deck in any order. So there we go. Now he's 17. Whoa. Um, there's, I'm going to draw them all right now, so it doesn't matter what order. I'll put them right there. And I've got two and a half attack left. But I hit the Mastermind three times. We'll see if I have time. I have... Um, I thinned this deck a ton. Now let's see what happens. I'm ending my turn. Um, left hand side's got one, two, three, four. And I can gain the sacrifice card back with the verse the snap if I sacrifice this. But it's five attack if I don't. And all I, I got, uh, I, I'm wishing to get both more, both Polaris's again after I shuffle everything up. And if I don't, I have the sidekick that might get me there. Here we go. Two more. Shield Trooper and Hulkbuster Armor. All right, getting those out of the way. I should have enough turns to survive, I think. There's only one more twist. Turn 34 is the Raft Prison. So Raft Prison's coming in. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player puts a villain from their victory pile to the escape pile or gains a wound. That's, about, that's one that nobody's going to do in, in this setup. Okay, now what can I do here? I can do infinite, fa infinite Lockjaw Phase if you want. Um, if I had an artifact, I'd be able to put, do Weapons Master. But let's go ahead and uh, play Epic Middle Manager. Maybe I'll get rid of one location if I can. Um, no, he gets buffed by the Cult location. And there's no Cult right now. Oh, yes, there is. No, nope, Maze Cult. Yes. Thank you. That is a Cult. Good catch. And the Officers, by the way, they should get their buffs too. Um, we got Instinct, we got Covert, and we got Tech, and we got Strength, and we got Range. So again, they're fully powered. These are the strongest Initiates who waited for the last minute to show up. So they're all at 8. Alright, once again, 5 attack. Do some KOing. If I play everything, I'm going to get 7, 9, and then 11. 
Let's just phase Lockjaw to see if I get an artifact out of it. And it's a wound. Let's phase Lockjaw to see if I get an artifact out of it. It's Lockjaw. I can just keep phasing Lockjaw forever. But that's not what you're here for. So I'm going to play everything else out. I'm going to play Weapons Master for two attack, seven. I'm going to play this Lockjaw for nine. He'll go away in a moment, just in case I want to take it back before I reveal anything. Thank you very much. I'm validated. All right, nine attack. Left-hand side is not going to have the best next turn unless I draw really well. Um, so I think I want to just ignore the city and fight. Well, if I fight the cult, that'll at least make it easier to take M'Baku out. Yeah, let's fight. Uh, let's fight the Cult of Skulls. Weakening the Mastermind a little. All right. Uh, nothing happens. Just, just, just defeated. Yep. They, they are the tactic. So if you want the tactic VP, you got to fight them as locations. So. Very good point. Okay, so Lockjaw is gone. I did use it. And uh, I don't need skids. I could play. I don't really want to mess, mess the, mess the HQ up. Or get anything out of the HQ. Mess my deck up at this point. Oh, excessive violence. I can't do that on a... Yeah, I can't do that on a location. So, that's fine. You know what? I'm going to go 3, 4, recruit. I'm not going to probably shuffle back around. So, I'm going to play everything. I'll play skids. I'll get rid of skids just to move the HQ along just in case. We're going to take a roundhouse sidekick. See what I get. And it's another daredevil. Okay. Not that great of a turn. Hopefully the sidekick will help me. Right hand side is not doing well. Left hand side is doing well at the right time. Hopefully. But sidekick's gonna, it's gonna be off to the sidekick. Turn 35, another master strike. <laughs> so once again, there are, there's wounds going out this time. And uh, I got rid of skids, wouldn't have had her anyway. So uh, he is maxed out at 19 attack. And then each player gains a wound because there are, oh, Grievous on the left. But that does give me a wound for Hulkbuster armor. But that is your last one, sir. Okay, let's see what this sidekick can draw for me. Give me something good, please. Here we go. Sunspot. Dual Existence. All right. Okay. Keep it going. Dual Existence. Top two cards in my deck. They are... Ooh. <laughs> well, I can draw Hydra halfway to draw the Officer, at least. But not the turn I really wanted. Hydra half wit. One and a half attack. And I will draw Maria Hill. Get her out of the way. Um, Hulkbuster armor. Two more recruit. On top of two more, I got four recruit to KO that fatal blow. Um, no range to draw cards. I do have reverse the snap. Let's look at it very carefully. And I did play attack. So it is tech. Sacrifice, gain up to one other hero from the KO pile. Combine your deck and discard pile. Put all those cards that cost zero into your discard pile. Shuffle the rest into a new deck. Um, yeah, he's not buffed anymore. There's no cult. We're good. So yeah, this sac this effect doesn't really do anything right now because I've already KO'd almost all my zero cost cards. But I basically I trade this for a card that's not as good. So I'm just going to play reverse the snap. It's a five attack card. Can't complain. Um, no rares have been KO'd. It's only that uh, Hulk I would get. And wow, I haven't played a single strength. I'll play the Dimensional Blade. Okay, um, the Trooper up to seven. I'll play Polaris because there's no reason not to play Polaris. Two Piercing Energy and... Nope, that doesn't do anything for anybody. Sunspot gives me two more. No trigger. Nine, a ten and a half attack. And I'm six, six recruit. Nine and a half attack. I've got two blades and two shards. I can get 13 attack if I want. Right hand side is going to not have a lot to do. Um, oh, and no buffs on these. But if I... There are... There's one tactic left in the final blow. I got one, two, three, four, five, six cards left. I lose and the villain deck runs out. There's one more twist in there. It's going to play an extra card.
So there's no chance of a scary escape because I can't have a scheme twist chain. Only going to be the one. I could fill the city next turn, though. And if I do, I'm only going to have two, three, four, six attack and a full discard pile. So I can hit M'Baku. Although left side is going to have to discard attack if I do that. But I got to put myself in the best position to, to try and hit the Mastermind. So I should hit a location. And yeah, I get the VP while I'm at it. Now, these two are at 11 right now. So actually, let me... Uh, this was with the end of this thing. Let me make it very clear what the situation is. 11 attack here. 11 attack here. 8, 8, and 6. So if I am going to hit location, I'm going to hit a tactic. Weaken him just a little. Because I'm not afraid of... Uh, I'm not worried about the city getting out of control. Up to 9.5 attack. No excessive violence stuff I can do. And uh, should I take... How do I get out of here, Bob? Is there any reason I should take this? It's four attack. Nah, I'm going to take uh, Dual Existence again. Keep drawing cards. And... Oh, I guess I could throw the blades, but I'll wait. Oh, there's Reverse Polarity. Four Recruit, Soaring Flight, X-Gene, X-Men. You can use Recruit as attack this turn and vice versa. That'll be great for the other side. I forgot about this one. Um, I think I want to go with a sidekick, and we'll call it. Okay, good. Card draws. That's it for this turn. I, got, I save my shards. Oh, they're off screen, by the way. Save my shards. Save my artifacts. This has better be a good. Hand. This better be a good hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dual existence might get me to where I want to go. Plus, I can draw one card if I can shuffle in and get to that Polaris card. Hey, yay! It took it took once I was on my computer. Thank you so much for the resub, Ollie. Twenty six months of subs for Ollie. That's incredible. Thank you so much. And let's re reduce the Mastermind's attack down to seventeen. It's gonna go back up soon. Turn thirty six. Running out of time. Bridge builders. Hello, there you are. They go here. They go to the bridge. Because that's what they do. Oh, by the way, this seven is still in effect for the seven henchmen. Left ha left hand side's got. Let's do the phase, get a sidekick thing, just in case. Top card is an operative. That's not good. Um, let's say two. Reveal Lockjaw, get a sidekick. I might have to hit the bridge builder because now I messed myself up. I want to clear something because I could have an escape. At the end of the game, it's going to be kind of a bummer if that happens. So four attack. Um, I can't hit M'Baku, so I'm going to have to hit the Bridge Builders. Each other player puts a villain from their victory pile into the escape pile and gains a wound. I, I'll gain the wound on the left-hand side. That's easy. I can get rid of it with Bruce. So I don't mind doing that. Just to avoid another escape. I want two spaces open. So I got uh, Polaris here. Extra card next turn. I should have kept and played Lockjaw, but I was hoping there was an attack there. Yes, with excessive violence. Um, which I'm about to do. And I'm at two and a half attack, excessive violence, draw a card. So let's do... I already got seven attack on that Bruce card. So let's do that. Let's hit with excessive violence. They are... Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to be a lot. Um, they are three... I think it's every class. Instinct, covert, um, tech, strength, range. Yep, they're maxed out. They're at eight, so... There you go. There's your answer. Um, let's play the operative. Five recruit and a half. So we're going to take out the bridge builders with excessive violence. Um, so I KO this operative. And I get to draw. Uh, yes, draw a card. There's Lockjaw again. I'm going to phase him since I can't use him right now for anything anymore. So phase. And I get the divided. Ooh, okay. How much more attack can I get now? How many different costs do I have? Um, I have three, zero, four, and six. So four attack. Again, too short to hit anything. That's too bad. So if I want to play hidden, that, that would have been better later on. So if I get... I can get the rare players. Awesome. Let's do that. And I get to put on top of my deck. Yes, yes, yes. We're on the same page. Eight recruit. So there we go. And reverse player is going right to the top of my deck. 
And I can use Recruit this turn and vice versa. But I gotta have X-Gene though, and I'm gonna lose it after I reshuffle. So as long as I can Recruit a Polaris, I can get that. And there's another uh, Pulse. Close game, very close game. So there's Reverse Polarity. One, two, I get seven cards. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, I have one card left in deck, so I do have the X-Gene right now. Okay, let's move over. Can I do it this turn? Turn 37. There's Riot. Oh, yeah, he speeds up the deck. I forgot. Ambush. Reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it's a villain, it symbiote bonds with Riot. Fight KO one of your heroes. I hope it's a twist. I don't think there's any bystanders left. Nope. Okay, that just sped up the game. So he's bonded with a uh, uh, Sidera Marine. So now there's only three cards left. So I could have only two turns left after the twist. And here's the thing about that. When the game ends, um, evil wins when, there's, when the villain deck runs out too. So that might be it for me. I uh, wish that had whipped. But let's see what I can do here. Not totally over yet. And they ambush too, yes. Which you mentioned earlier. So they go to the bridge. Which is fine. Okay. And for the fateful draw, I can do this. So let's see. Um, let's. I don't have a lot of drawing though. That's the problem. So before I lose... Oh, I didn't get a wound at all. So let's start with Dual Existence, shuffling in my discard pile. So top two cards in my deck. We got Crush Puny Weaklings. That's great. And we shuffle it up. I can draw one more card with the Polaris. Okay, these are the two I look at. Okay. I will draw Dual Existence. Put Crush Puny Weaklings back for now. Play the second Dual Existence, top two cards in my deck. No, because I never fought... Um, Oh, from the, uh... Yeah, wait a second. Where is my wound? No, I got rid of it last turn doing something, didn't I? When the Master Strike happened, I KO'd it, and then I never fought anything in the Wrath. So I don't think I got one. Okay, here's the top two cards in my deck. Did I actually fight? Was that Wasn't that somewhere else? I mean, I'll take the wound. And that's even better for me. I thought I fought somewhere else, but okay. I guess it was there. So, um, we'll back that up then. Get the wound. The first thing I'll do is play Hulkbuster Armor. KO the wound. Easy. Easy fix. Get the two recruit. That would have been the only thing there. One of the things there. And then back to what we're doing. So, back here, um, I've got these two cards... Crush Puny Weaklings and Hydra Half Whip. I definitely want to take Crush Puny Weaklings. I wish Hydra Half Whip wasn't there, because now I know I won't draw what I need with um, Polaris. Uh, but uh, let's make sure I have what's played and what's not played. I wish I had more card draw. Um, I do have the tech trigger, so I will play Crush Puny Weaklings for... Did I actually fight one? Wait a second. No, no, no. Right-hand side fought the henchman. There's a henchman on the top of the right-hand side's pile. Left-hand side didn't fight. Oh, other other player. Okay, never mind. We're good. Wrap stuff. Fine. All right. Uh, Two-ended solo. Seven. I still got seven, so let's play this out. I got three attack plus seven. That's ten attack. I'm just disappointed that I can't draw on anything good. Very much chaos. Um, Hulk gets smashed, I'll play without doing anything. That's 12. Brains and Brawn, up to 16. And then I will spend one shard to get 17 and hit the Mastermind. Maybe this will let me draw cards, I don't know. It is Prison of Coffins. You get plus... Oh, this would have been better for the other side. If this is not already a location, you get plus five recruit, and this card enters the city as a location with this ability. Whenever you fight a villain here, each other player puts a villain from their victory pile into the escape pile. So I get five recruit up to nine for all that's worth. Um, I could... 
I will draw with the player. Says, but the top card is a. Um, I get one draw, and the top card is is Bob, so it's not gonna do that much more for me. Okay, so the final blow. He's at 19. I wish I could get six, but I, I'm not going to do that. By the way, no discard pile. I only have another turn on the left-hand side if the bottom card is a Scheme Twist. If not, I don't have another turn on the left-hand side. All right, well, I have no choice. Let's play the first Pulse. Two piercing, second one, two more piercing, and I draw, and it's going to be that Bob who gets in the way. Hydra Halfwit, one and a half more attack, top card of my deck. It's reverse the snap, so that's not Shield or Hydra, so I don't draw it. Okay, well, um, I can at least piercing energy this whole thing away, Riot and the bridge builders and the bridge builders again because I can't use them on a villain I should have saved the one shard by drawing with players first yeah that's true but I do have one shard and two blades left I might not even have another turn to make it make a difference I'm going to KO Bob just to punish him right now Let's spend my three of my piercing energy on the bonded Riot and Bridge Builders, and we'll take out Riot here. Um, other side is going to gain a couple of wounds, but I'm not going to have another turn over there, so it doesn't matter. Although, do I have any card draws? No, it's not going to matter. Or, yeah, I can't. I can't hit a location with this. So, okay, one of my heroes. I, I Bob's gone. <laughs> And then we're going to take out the Bridge Builders for the last Piercing Energy. Okay, I have another one of my heroes. And it's going to be Hulkbuster Armor. More KOs happening. And let's just, just in case, I'll take the other Pulse for four. And I'll end it there. If I'm lucky, I'll get another turn. And we'll see. Why does it have flight? The the ranged Polaris? This one? What did I what did I miss? I didn't take Rather Magnetic Waves. Yeah, I thought I missed something. All right, moving over. Oh, by the way, here's my new hand. There's the other Polaris. So maybe that hand is out of shot, but I don't know. I might not have an opportunity. This hand is probably not going to do it. Although I can use Recruiter's Attack to start. Can I get 19? I don't know. Probably not. There we go. Turn 38. Okay, there's a Bridge Builders. They go to the bridge, which means if the next card is a twist, I lose. The next card is not a twist. I might win. We'll see. The question is, can I get 19 attack with all of this? Um, I don't know. Probably not. I've got two artifacts. So Weapons Master is going to give me four attack. Then I've got Reverse Polarity, which I'll play right now. Four Recruit. I can use Recruit as attack and attack as Recruit. I definitely have an X-Men card in here somewhere. Right? What if I don't? Oh, there's, yeah, Rock Slide and Magma. So, um, I can basically have 8 attack. 10. Can I get 9 more points? I have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to phase Lockjaw. But I still might be short. Because if I don't phase him, I definitely don't have a shot. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's 10 points, 12, 13, 15 points. I need four more points. I don't think I can get more four more points. I don't know where I would get those. Left hand side is all the good stuff. So I guess I'll phase lock show one more time. Here we go. And it's gonna be the artifact that I put there. So yeah, same thing. 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 points is what I can get. And if I'm gonna lose this, I might as well get as much VP as I can or try to get take out some locations. Um so here's the thing. Um if I take out some locations, or at least one, left hand side has got a shot if I survive. But that might be a twist and I might not survive. If it is a twist, by the way, and I don't find anything in the city, what that means is not only am I going to Yeah, not only am I going to lose, but I'll have one escape at the end. If that's a villain. I don't know if it is or not. Because it'll put an officer in and then play a card. Yeah, there's two cards left. If What I'm saying is the twist plays another card from the villain deck. And I lose and the villain deck is empty. So if the next card is not a twist... Let's see, how many bystanders came out of the villain deck? I don't I don't recall. I do not recall. So I, I wasn't tracking. It might be. But anyway, I definitely don't have another right-hand side turn. So I might as well throw everything and see what happens. So I've got... Um... In the beginning, I put a scheme on the bottom. No, I had no opportunity to tuck any scheme to us to the bottom this, this game. I think I revealed one as the top three cards of the deck, and I put them back in any order. I didn't get to tuck one to the bottom. That would have been great, though. All right, so I'll throw them both the National Blades. So that's two more Recruit and two more Attack. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go for the locations. That's the smartest thing to do. I'll throw the Winged Helm as well. Although, hold on. Hold on. Before I keep going, I could back up. Winged Helm will let me draw cards, right? So what if I fought the Bridge Builders, triggered the wound from the Raft, and drew two more cards? That might be something I want to try before I throw the artifacts. And then maybe I can do something interesting. That would let me draw extra cards. No, but this can pre prevent the other player's wound and draw cards. Right? If a player regained a wound, you may, you may throw this to prevent that wound and draw two cards instead. So I would draw the two cards. I'm all, I'm, I'm all right on that, right? I think I want to try that. So let me unthrow those two thrown artifacts. I'll turn back down. Yeah, may, that. Why? I'll take. I'll take the shot. I'll take the chance. I might. I might get something else. And then I can just phase lockjaw again if I re really want to try. So let me back up. I got four attack and then six recruit. That's correct. Let's give it a shot. It might help me. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend my three attack. Fight the bridge builders. KO a hero. An operative. Each other player is not going to put a villain in, so they're going to gain the wound. I'll avoid the wound. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll draw the winged helm and lock John. Then I can phase for something better. So I get one, one chance. So I throw the winged helm. And then I draw the Winged Helm and Lockjaw. So I basically just draw Lockjaw back. So what I'm going to do is phase Lockjaw for one of these mystery cards. And we'll see which one I get. Okay. Yeah, we're phasing Lockjaw. For a mystery card for my discard pile. There's a few I hope it is. And uh, there's a few I'm probably going to get. So... It is going to be... shuffle this forever here we go top card i get is an operative of course of course it is so i just really messed myself up so now i'll throw everything again seven recruit eight two nine three four i have 13 total points i can use so i can't hit the master but i still can hit a location i tried only i could hit 14 I can get both locations, but uh, I'll get one of the uh, one of the Reaper locations. And yeah, I can get an officer for that one extra awesome VP. So I'll get rid of the Maze of Bones for eight. 
we'll, I don't know, we'll use all recruit on that one. I got five more points left, thanks to Polaris. I can switch everything around. Oh, I can fight M'Baku instead of an officer. Uh, on the left side, is going to have to discard a tech card, which um, I don't want to do. So let's take out the officer for three and uh, send her undercover and see if it even matters. See if I can get one more turn. If it's a twist, that's going to be it. If it's not a twist, I have a chance. It is a coin flip. It is a coin flip at this point. This top card is going to be it. Oh, yeah, the one on the rooftops. We'll fight this one. Here we go. In three, two, one. It is not the twist. And the game is not over this turn. Okay, so Riot's not going to be able to bond with this twist. The villain deck is not empty. It was just revealed. So it's still there. Right? Technically, the villain deck did not empty it. We just revealed it. So I have another turn. Whew, that was a close one. All right, can I do this, this turn? I need 19 attack or I need six piercing energy. I don't have a lot right now. I've got on the board, I got five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine attack. I need 10 more. I need 17. Yes, he's weakened. It's all going to come down to what the heck this sidekick is going to draw. And I'm nervous he's not going to draw anything good, but I got to take that shot. Here we go. Sidekick. Draw two. We get Sunspot and we get Dual Existence. Okay. That's put me up to... I don't have any strength cards. Let's do it. Dual Existence. Shuffle the discard pile. I got some good things here. It's my last draw. Give me something good. <sighs> Nothing good for the uh, Bruce's sacrifice doesn't do anything good for me um, right now. Okay, we get Crush Penny Weaklings, and Hulk gets smashed. Okay, I think I want to draw Crush Penny Weaklings. Is that going to be enough to hit? That's going to be ten attack. That's going to do it. That's going to do it. Whew. Okay, let's play this out. I think I just did it the very last second. You guys, you guys post it right away. You guys, I trust you guys. Five attack. Seven attack. Eight attack. Oh, man. Very close one. We've got uh, Puny Weaklings triggered off the tech. Um, Eleven attack. Up to 18 attack. Oh, man. I'm, my heart rate is very quick right now. All right. Two recruit, four recruit. Anything else I can get? I got two piercing energy. I'll throw both blades. For two more recruit and two more attack. I max it on 20. I will trade the shard in for 21 just so I can get the second die out. So I have four bonus attack for extra things. Um, so let's just hit. Uh, Riot. Think of the hammers. Uh, we're going to hit Riot for two. Get a little more VP. 19. And K, one of my heroes. Uh, I'm going to get rid of Bruce Banner's rare. And we're going to go ahead and hit Grim Reaper. Oh boy, what a close game that was. All right, that is it. We have taken out Epic Grim Reaper by the skin of our teeth. It was a victory just barely. That was so, so close. Whew. That was fun. Thank you guys for watching that one. Yeah, last card in the villain deck was the final scheme twist, which would have played an extra card from the villain deck. And yeah, let's. We want to take a look at my uh, officer stack here. We had two more Marias, three more Marias, and a Sharon Carter, and then some fun stuff down there. But there's a lot more Marias than the non Marias. So. Bruce Banner's Heroes, that is so good. All right, stick around. Let me resolve everything for you. Again, big thanks to Ollie and Kyla for taking over the behind the scenes of the Randomizer League. They are going to be posting Setup B and putting up all the uh, forms and posts and everything for you guys. So please give them some patience. And they'll post about it. Um, we're going to move up the, the due date for these. They're going to be 10 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be the due date on Wednesday. Wednesday, 10 p.m. Pacific, before the night, day before the stream, night before the stream. Uh, all right. And they'll remind you they'll have the, the universal timestamp in there. All right. I don't think my score is going to be great because I took way too long. But I do have a lot of VP, so, you know, let's see. No escapes, too. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, record all this. Let me do the predictions first. And there's a lot of you here, so I'm going to send you over to somebody else who's streaming some board games after. So stick around for that. You do get some more channel points 
for participating in that. Also, it'll be really cool to uh, pay it forward to the board game community who helped me out a lot. So I hope you stick around just for that raid. Um, setup is already up. That's so cool. This is what I was hoping for. All right, setup is up. That's great. Um, it was a win, just barely. So there's your points, everyone. That's that's awesome news. Great job, you guys. I'm very happy about that. All right, let me go ahead and uh, record everything. So let me grab my keyboard. Zero escapes. And then we got uh, 39 turns. And uh, let me go ahead and count my victory piles. Here we go. Left hand side got 6, 8, 9, 11, 17, 18, 19, 22, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31. Oh, these are worth how much? I'm at 31. Oh, I, I already put tax. Okay, 31. They're worth 6 VP. Okay, so 37. 38, 39, 40, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 51, 52, 53 on the left. Okay. Here my squeaky chair. And then right hand side's got one, seven, eight, nine, fifteen. Man, these locations have a lot of points. 20, 26, 27, 33, 38, 39, 42, 43. 45, 46, 50, 51, 53, 56 on the right. Pretty close on both sides. I left some VP on the board, but 109. And yeah, thank you. Let's log that right now. Why not? So that's what I was going to hope. Uh, I was hoping you guys could do. I could log this right, right here. Um, but uh, since I already did that, I'll log it on stream next time to send it to me as soon as the game is over. Um, and I'll log this off stream since I already counted all that. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Uh, we're going to pay it forward by checking out another board game streamer since there are so many of you here. Please say hello to them. Um, I'm, setting up these setups is not easy. There's a lot of effort put into it. So I appreciate anybody who does that. Oh, I'm hearing some, hearing some streams. Mute. Anyway, I'm going to end the stream and we're going to go ahead and raid somebody. And I will see you guys over there. Uh, go get those results in. Good luck.